I'm here. Oh shit. Backlighting. Um I'm here. I'm here. Uh I just want to smoke weed. <laughs> I gotta tell you. I'm not high yet. Um, but I am pretty burned from my workout. Um <clears throat> I threw on extra laps. I threw on extra distance. I threw on like extra effort on the bike ride tonight. Oh, uh, my thighs are still kind of kicking my ass. Uh, Amorous, I really don't like smoking weed before stream at least because I won't stream. Um, 100%. Like if I smoke weed before stream, I'm not streaming. That's fucking yeah, like, no. <laughs> Um, during the stream, eventually I get to that point. Um, the right sort of combination of shit, um, will, will get me, will get me there. I've got a bowl loaded. It's prepared. It's prepared. Um, so, and it's new weed. So, um, yeah. Nice, Karina. I didn't do core today. I didn't do core. I skipped it. I've done core every day for like sands one day for like a couple of weeks. I've been kicking. I've been kicking my ass with the core workouts. Um, so Kaiser, I would. Um, fucking. Uh, late, late night anarchism sounds sex. Uh, yes, we're doing late night anarchism trademark. Um, I don't fucking know. I don't know what, to, I don't know what tonight's fucking stream is. I don't, I got nothing. I, I don't even really have any headlines I want to talk about. I don't have any news. Uh, you know what? <clears throat> there is one headline that I want to talk about. Um, a, where is this? St. Clair County. Uh, East Carindelet, 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 um, either way, the, um, a new, um, fire chief was, uh, was named acting fire chief of Prairie DuPont, um, volunteer fire department in St. Clair County, Illinois. Um, you may be wondering why this is of any note why the fuck I may be talking about this at all. Um, the new fire chief is a convicted arsonist. Yes. Yeah. Marcus, the arsonist. Yeah. He's a convicted arsonist. Um, he's the son of a politician and the politician ousted the previous fire chief, um, to give his son a position. Um, and the position that he arranged for his son to have is the fire chief of the county. And, um, his son is a convicted arsonist. <laughs> um, and if you're like, oh, hey, you know, maybe he was just a, a kid who like, you know, lit some shit on fire. Yeah. He, uh, set a fire, uh, a, a, he set a vacant home on fire and then another on fire. And then the high school on fire. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I love America. Yes, you, you're right. Um, <laughs> perfect man for the jobs. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. For me, this isn't late night anarchism. It's before you could even consider a sunrise existing early morning anarchist stream. Well, Crimson, you're on your own. Uh, who amongst us who hasn't torched several buildings in youthful indiscretions? Um, yeah, yeah, that was that was the the, the one headline that I was like, yes, that's a thing. Um, anybody want to get into IT? Is anybody looking for like a gig? Um, 
Uh, the, okay, so here's here's why I ask. Um, the um, Jesus Christ. So managing uh, director of engineering for uh, resilient coders um, is running another uh, free full stack boot camp. Um, he basically. Every Tuesday and Thursday from 6.30 p.m. Eastern to 9.30 p.m. Eastern with office hours on Sunday from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern on Twitch. Um, last cohort of the last boot camp, it is a full, uh, full live intensive, uh, full stack web development boot camp covering everything from no technical skills to full employment, no cost, 100% free. Um, it is sincerely truly free um the the last cohort uh of uh that they that they ran um 65 people got uh jobs from that group that they trained up um the average increase in salary was fifty three thousand dollars so i mean it, it, this is i mean I'm, these are credible people like I'm not, I'm not recommending something that is like some sort of sham thing here. Like if you, if you're looking for an, a career in IT, uh, if you're looking for a way to like learn stuff and you're going from like literally nothing to full stack web development, this is probably your opportunity to do it. Um, yeah. So, um, if you want in, let me know. Um, uh, if you know somebody who should be doing it and let me know that sort of thing. Um, so yes. It's, I'm, I'm telling you, um, they'll, they'll be covering full stack JavaScript, HTML, CSS, um, JavaScript, Node, uh, React, and Mongo database um, in, in the coursework. Um, also, they'll lay the groundwork for pursuing a career in software engineering as well. Um, so it is, yeah. So let me know. If you're interested, I'll D, uh, uh, DM you the information. So. <clears throat> Probably speculative, Marcus. Yeah. Hey, Anita. Um, all right. Give me, give me a show of hands here. Like, okay, you know what? Fucking tag me. All right, um, tag me in the comments on the Discord server if you're interested. Um, and I'll send you the DM. How about that? That'll make it easier for me. Um, so 85% of the graduates, most don't have degrees, by the way, or prior experience, um, go on getting full-time offers. Um, average starting salary is $98,000, um, for the people that actually finish the program. Um, all free stipend, no bullshit, no funny business. Um, yeah, the, 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 the person who will be helming this has taught classes at Harvard at MIT. Um, you will be in good hands. Um, so, all right. Uh, let me see. One DM sent, two DM sent, three DM sent, <laughs> four DM sent. Um, hey, Rumble. Uh, I mean, there's an argument to be made. They'd already, ha they already have uh, Anita. Um, so 
So basically, um, for those, the four people that put their hands up, um, there's a form to fill out. There's um, tasks that you have to do ahead of time. Um, they're kind of bullshit, but just do them. Um, and then um, you need to you need to send a video. You you literally you have to record a two minute video of why the boot camp is like right for you. Um, you you have to sign a commitment as well. Um, you'll be putting in 10 hours of work outside of class each week and committing to a full 30 hours, uh, full 30 weeks. Um, know that ahead of time. And the document that I sent you guys uh, will elaborate upon all of these stipulations. Um, so, either way. Um, oh, you poor pathetic sucker. Yeah, just just say it, you pathetic loser. Just say fuck Joe, uh, just f say fuck Joe Biden. Also, fuck Donald Trump. But fuck Obama, but fuck Bush, fuck Clinton, fuck Bush again, fuck Reagan, fuck Nixon, right? Like just just say fuck Joe Biden, you pathetic you pathetic loser. Right, like, it's not clever, it's not cute, it's sophomoric at best. Just say it. Oh. Yes, and the Republicans are so much better. <laughs> oh, let's see. The legs from a makeshift monitor lift. Oh, nice. Good on you, Karina. I, you know what? I can knock that out pretty sh pretty quickly. Oh, you know what? I can't. It's a command script. I'd have to fucking script it up. I don't feel like doing it right this second. <laughs> Corey. Uh, <laughs> what if you dirty damn pizza gate call me? This is me being jealous after seeing Kai's abs. After I've had an entire rotisserie chicken and a quarter of a sweet potato pie for dinner. Oh, I am envious though, Corey. Uh, real shit though. Nice shout out to your listeners of whatever assistance. Uh, it's a real last move and obviously reflects back its reputation. Thank you, Corey. Um, and I hope you enjoyed your entire rotisserie chicken too. <laughs> plenty of protein. See, see, Corey, there's plenty of protein in that chicken. So fucking gains. And you need your carbs, right? Like carbs are fuel for your body. You are just loading. You are preloading for the workout that has yet to come. That's you're you're thinking ahead. So you got that galaxy brain, Corey. Um, Mosh, of course they aren't. Of course they aren't. Um. Oh, let's see. Is there anything else I want to? Oh, the Kellogg strike is over. Um, that's all. All carbohydrates get converted over. Uh, wither. You're in the right. You're in the right camp. It is it is glucogen. Uh, glu uh, glycogen. Sorry, glucogen. Glycogens. Um. <laughs> Deep throat, Nancy. Um. The Kellogg's strike is over, and they didn't win. Don't don't give in to the celebration. Um, I've I've seen multiple breakdowns. Um, it, it is it is a minor victory at best. Hey, Stellar. Um, the the um. There is literally a leaked, um, um, there's a leaked email from, I believe the CEO or some, one, some of the higher management 
in Kellogg's about how it provides no overall gain for the workers and that it was the union leadership that literally used divide and conquer tactics from the uh, uh, pitting the veterans uh, again, the long timers against the new hires. And this, so don't, don't celebrate. Don't celebrate. This is not a win for the labor movement. This is bullshit. Um, it needs called out the way it needs calling out. Yeah. This was, this is why wildcat strikes need to be a thing. It's why they're illegal, by the way. It's because, it's because the union leadership fucking screwed the, the rank and file on this one. Um, and if you want, like, if you want the, uh, the full leaked email, um, here's, here's a link, uh, to the leaked email. Um, and here's even a Newsweek article about talking about how the email says there's no overall gain. Uh, Wildcat strikes uh, wither are when the union members strike despite union leadership not calling for a strike. It's the members saying, yeah, we don't give a shit about what union leadership says. We're striking. That's what a wildcat strike is. I would go so far, Exel, to argue that union structure under the way that the U.S. has legislated unions um, moving forward from the Taft-Hartley Act, uh, Act um, are basically all bad unions. It's, it's difficult to have a powerful union in this country that isn't co-opted. Yeah. They, 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 there's some net g benefits. There's net gains across the board but I mean given how we've legalized the structure of them yeah there's too many problems um let the record show I'm 6'3 nine, 195 pounds uh you fans are gonna think I'm going the way I was eating Gilbert Grape uh Uh, so what you're saying is that I can still be a jaded post-leftist about this. Cat, not only can you, you should be. Um, pastique, that's actually fair. Yeah, that's actually a fair, uh, a fair like, uh, semantic criticism or turnabout. Um, just cringe, don't tell me what to do. You are me, bitch. I'll tell you what to do because it's the same as telling me what to do, which falls under egoism. Ha! Matrix win. Um. <laughs> Love you, cat. Um. <laughs> so German law as well. Wildcat strikes are illegal under. Interesting. If Kai has sex with cat, is that equivalent to masturbation? No, it's equivalent to incest. It's like banging my brother. Ugh. Um, is that how philosophy works? I'm pretty sure that's not how philosophy works. What do you know? You're an attorney. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I, could see, I could see it, cat. I could see it. Oh, uh, I don't fucking know what to do with this stream, cat. I'm I just want to be I just want to be stoned right now. Um, any of you fuckers want to jump on the air? You just want to do this? Um Oh, Corey, it's already, dude, it's already a it's already a thing. Like that's long past that point. Um fucking Bone and chickpea soup. Oh god, chickpeas. Not a fan. Not a fan. Um, whether I'm getting potato chips. Whether I'm a ship cat over to your uh, your coast. Whether just to whip your butt in shape, get you uh, physically fit before you get too old. <laughs> um. I, I know, Cat. I'm just not a fan of them. I just don't like them. Um, nutritionally, I use them, but I don't like them. Um. <laughs> Crimson. Crimson, why don't you just go to bed, man? You are so fucked. <laughs> I just go to bed, man. Um.
I do agree with that, Amaris. That Sterner would just be living in his basement, troll people in eight chan. Uh, hey, my BA is in religion and philosophy. I, I'm basically Count Dooku using my training for evil. <laughs> um, oh, Jesus Christ. Non-binary. That's... It's on principle. Fair enough. Uh... Terrence McKenna used to say that you should uh, you should disagree with the common opinion on principle alone. If everybody else thinks it, there's there's a Jewish tradition of that as well um, that I quite admire. It basically states if there's a hundred people gathered in a room and ninety nine all agree on something, it's your duty to disagree with them. Which I I I admire. I do. I do. On a certain level, I really, I spiritually understand that. <laughs> it's like, you know, fucking I walk into a room and 99 people are all like, yes, this is the way. I'm like, can't be the way. Can't be the way. I don't, I don't, I don't agree. <laughs> I get it. I get, I get that impulse. Uh, uh, oh, beast. Boo. Beast. Boo. Um, Kvass, your ways are stupid. I'm going home. Um, that tenth dentist actually toothpaste is bad. I I always wonder about that. The four out of five dentists, what they ask that fucking fifth dentist? Because I don't believe. Like, if Colgate is telling me some shit went down, hey level, how was your stream? Um, yeah, like if if Colgate the Colgate Corporation is telling me something, like I, I don't I don't believe it. I'm like, I wanna know what you asked those dentists. I wanna see the paper. Uh I do too, Kaiser. I appreciate the scholarly aspect of Judaism. Yeah. They got some problems. I mean, but I mean all of the Abrahamic stuff has problems, right? That's burnt just But how'd your stream go level? What'd you guys get up to? We're, we're just having a, a night of, like, we're just bullshitting at this point. Like, occasionally I mention something or something else, but I'm I'm burned out from my fucking bike ride tonight. I, I put the little ridiculous. Nice. Well, then bring the ridiculous here because I'm going to smoke weed at some point. I mean, smoke flavored tobacco because smoking weed would be illegal at the national level, and I would never do anything like that. Um... I'm going to be smoking flavored tobacco that may make me a bit wacky partway through this stream. Um, so working on, um, I appreciate the steady homoeroticism that underlines Islamic traditions. It is kind of gay. I was working on a story but wound up arguing about ableism and whatnot. What, what was the argument level? I get, I get called ableist all the time. What was the argument? Um, you're in VC waiting? I mean... All right. Yeah. Yeah, whether back in the day, the Persian Empire and the the Islamic tradition were some of the world's most advanced scholars. Yeah. Geometry, mathematics across the board, scientific literacy, um, geography, medical science, philosophy. Yeah, they were some of the world's most renowned thinkers. Everybody has a dark ages. Uh, <laughs> I look forward to the day I've woken up in the middle of the night by Kai asking if I know any criminal defense lawyers in Nevada. Marcus, I already have a criminal defense lawyer in Nevada. <laughs> but if you happen to know a good one, uh, they were smart when they were gay. Um, Someone saying that disability pensions don't make sense and no disability exemptions for anyone. Uh, uh, it, no disability exempts anyone from working. Oh. <clears throat> My favorite thing about Arab history is opium smoking. Dude, I'd love to fucking smoke opium in an opium den back in the day. Right? That'd be great. That'd be great. Um, Just a fucking, like, right? Like, Silk Road... Um, spice trade, you've just done a deal in the in the Grand Bazaar, and you and your trading partner go off to the opium den, and it's seedy, and you go in, and it's all smoky, and you lay down upon this, like, all of these, just the world's best fabrics. 
the world's best fabrics, right? In like, in let's just say in Marrakesh, right? I want I want a Moroccan vibe to my my opium smoking den, and just the the ta the tapestries hung from the ceiling. Oh man, yes. And then the, the pipe, the long pipe that you smoke as you you're laying there, basically, and you nod off occasionally. Dude, it'd be fun. It'd be fun. Um. <laughs> Imagine seeing a dapper Englishman just fucking slumped. Um. Uh, typical leftist degen. <laughs> it's almost like I may have a logo prepared. What? <laughs> um, yeah. I, hey, um, I'm, you know, I'm not waiting on the, uh, <laughs> I, heroin isn't addic that addictive because it's terrible. <laughs> I'm just, you know, you just gotta, you gotta figure out your timing, right? You shouldn't be doing heroin when you're like 18. That'll, that'll ruin your fucking life. But if you're like, 72 and you've got prostate cancer well bring on maxwell silver hammer right like i've lived a full and productive maybe life who gives a shit i'm gonna fucking ride this bitch on the way out right that that's that's when you do it you got it's it's just timing everything is timing folks everything is timing um Cat, I'm 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 literally just gonna I'm gonna claim that I was the forebearer of that, like I was the front runner, I was the precursor to it. Yeah, I was I was definitely the first leftist to lean into degeneracy. I don't care what anybody else is, uh, else says. I don't care about prior art or history or internet archive records. Um, I I 100% was the first one to do it. Um, <laughs> fair enough, weather. My place of work is gladly very mixed in employees, race, sex, creed, sexuality. Uh, yesterday, yesterday, before the shutdown, this one, uh, this dude that's fresh off his 90 days starts going off in the break room about how Quans is a made up holiday. If I personify the SpongeBob, I'ma head out me more. <laughs> <laughs> the la the, I'm the least worried because I would talk and ask. Homie has a week into January till he has his, uh, he hits his ass on the way out. Mm. Uh, Kai, Kai does not equal humility. Eh, I, that's that's the one thing I can say. Humility does not go a long way in this world, Karina. It really just doesn't. Um, I'm laughing that anarchism in the title has a trademark symbol on it. Level, right? I think it's great. I think it's great. It's Fucking uh, <laughs> looks at the statue of a woman being fucked by Pan. I mean, if you say so. I I carved that statue. Um, a previous incarnation of myself, um, many many years ago, carved that statue. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay some like multi dimensional woo woo shit claim on that statue. That was me too. Uh, <laughs> nice red, nice. Um. Hey, Modi. Oh, all right. Fucking. <sighs> I, I, I just. It's going to be a degenerate stream. It's going to be a degenerate stream. I already know it. There is no past, only now. I mean, from a very real way, Wither. Yes. There is no future, either. There never has been. Um, Especially for all your Zoomers. Uh, <laughs> um, what did I watch recently that I wanted to watch with you guys? Oh, it was the it was the Elon Musk take takedown. Actually, that's what I was watching. Um, I it was just uh, it was just taking the piss out of uh, Elon Musk. Um, yeah, straight con man, just straight con man. Uh, so let's see. Sadly, under current UK government, my plan, uh, plans, my retirement age is going to be 98, says Che. Um, waiting for, oh, Jesus, read passages for, uh, from Waiting for Godot. No, I'll, I'll pass on that. Um, is there anything that I would want to read a passage from there? Um, oh, you know what, actually... There is something I actually kind of would want to read a passage out of. Hang on. Give me a second.
All right, so the egoist uh, post-leftist insurrection has begun. The stream is ours. Hey, now the stream is ours. Fuck. <laughs> Got it. There we go. This is our stream now, people. Damn it! Not even two seconds, and the and the, the and the lefties took it from me. Lefties, we are here on representation of the great fungal mycelial mat. No, I'm a lefty. Song. I don't know what the fuck's Karina doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to proselytize a cult, bitches. <laughs> I'm glad that's. I'm glad that's. I'm glad that Kaiser's <laughs> rallying behind the behind the cause. Uh. What are we doing? We're killing Ancoms off and going with Sterner instead. No, I I, I took over the stream. The the the, the egoists uh, had won for like five seconds before Caboose and Karina came in. Ah. Um. All right. Let's see. Technically, I think the only Ancom here is Karina. Cringe. Hey, what do you what do you Cringe. define as Caboose these days? Anson. Ah. Okay. I you know dirty lefties either way. Yeah. Is. Is a communalist a communist? I like. Is that actually a like? Oh. No. Actually, wait. I thought communalists yeah, weren't. No. Yeah, I thought communalists weren't anarchists. Well, it depends if you're uh, if you're uh, an uh, anarcho communalist. Like, um, uh, um, Cospio was communalist. So, um. So, what's the abbreviation for that then? If it's not ANCOM? Generally, we just refer to them as communalists. Yeah, they're oh. different. They're different in like very specific ways. Um, I have a question for later. I finished writing a mail. This is Pastique. All right. Um. Oh, Pastique. It's been a minute since we've seen you on the stream. Pastique was here yesterday. Well, the minute <laughs> that I've seen you again, <laughs> you gotta remember that if I'm cat. if I'm not if you gotta remember if I'm not around, it didn't happen. Um. Yes, and as a fractal expression of myself in the Matrix. Uh, it counts. So, yeah, yeah. There's no escaping that. Uh <laughs> I must forever live knowing that there's another pair of eyes that belong to me that I can't see out of. Yeah. Uh, see what we need to. What we need to do. <laughs> that was philosophical. We need to. We need to do a shit ton of just like a breakthrough dose together, and then we'll probably have that moment. I know Terrence and Dennis did uh, in the um, in La Chirera. Uh, in South America when they did just an inordinate amount of DMT and shrooms together and they broke reality for like two weeks. Dude, they broke their fucking brains. It's one of the most <laughs> amazing stories to listen to told. But they they legitimately, like a pair of brothers, like were exhibiting like telepathy. Like <laughs> It was like they had people with them too that were like, yeah, shit was weird for a while. <laughs> Yeah, I was about to say, like, if we experienced that, I feel like not much would change, frankly. <laughs> That's kind of a funny thing. It's drawn from the same well anyway, so who gives a shit? Um, it's like, it's just, it's just a little bit more accurate and faster now. It's more efficient. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this is, this is one of my, this is one of my, like, just sort of favorite moments. Um... This is this is Alexander Shulgin and um, Anne Shulgin, his wife, not at this time, but um, it was just lovers at the time of this telling of the story. But like I he legitimately was one of the best chemists this this world has ever seen. Right. Like he gave us so many psychedelic or psychoactive compounds and like more than like anybody reasonably ever should have been able to right like there have been a few that put up like you know hey you know fucking we got lsd we got you know you there's a few that like chemists come along and they they bestow a single compound right like this motherfucker's got books full of psychoactive uh, psychoactive compounds and he he's lying in bed at the point where he's telling this um he's he's speaking to Anne, she refer she used to call him shura that was her her nickname for him um he was lying in bed with Anne, and they were tripping on shrooms 
um, basically doing psychoactive compounds was just, it was like drinking wine um, in, in Alexander's house, right? That's it was just par for the course, right? Like you're along for the ride or you're not. Um, so this is a wine drinking house, right? This is a, we do drugs house. Um, and so <clears throat> Shora lay back on his pillow and gazed up at the ceiling for a while, then raised himself up on one elbow again. Let me tell you something that might interest you, he said. I nodded and a room full of prisms nodded with me. I can't speak for other chemists, but I know that when I'm working in the lab, putting together a new compound, I not only see it upside down, inside out, and in three dimensions in my mind, but I also sense other aspects of what's developing. You might say that a personality, or to use your term, an entity, begins to take shape as I work. I try to feel it out to get a sense of whether it's friendly or not, whether it's liable to open up this area of the mind or that area of the mind. Does it have a dark nature, which mean, uh, may mean I'm going to have to watch out for overstimulation of the nervous system, or some other difficulty I can't anticipate? By the time the new compound is completely developed, ready to nibble, it has a personality. Not yet known because I have to interact with it. My chemistry has to interact with the substance it's never had a relationship with before. But even though I can't define that new personality yet, it's certainly there. By the time I've explored the new compound through its active levels, its nature has become quite clear. And the entity has accepted some of my inputs to its creation and its personality. I can say without any hesitation at all that every compound I've discovered and tried has a real character all its own, quite as distinct as anything supposedly attached to growing a plant. It's just one of those things. I was like, you know what, I'm going to smoke some weed. I'm in the mindset. Alexander Shulgin could, like figure out like cooks are good at this this is one of those skill sets i developed as a cook over the years that you can sort of put flavors together in your brain and you can sort of you can taste them you like okay you know turmeric plus ginger plus a little garlic plus some cilantro plus some onion plus some sauteed beef like you can figure that out in your head alexander shulgin could do that with psychedelic drugs at the molecular level which is why we ended up with books like this thick, right? Okay, well, not to be fair. This much is just the phenethyl means that he created, right? It's a literal drug chef. Yes. Yeah, he was the king of drugs. He, he legitimately, I think, may be the best chemist that, the, that humanity has ever produced on, like, a very, like, deep level, right? Like, imagine, like, this is some, like, Tony Stark three-dimensional fucking augmented reality shit. This motherfucker's, like, figuring out molecular spin, and as he's attaching molecules and uh, subtracting molecules, he's literally like can conceptualize the character of the drug he's creating I, the fact that there's people that are out there that can do that with fucking molecules is astounding he he's one of the few he's he was he had a dea exemption he had a lab on premises for his uh, for, uh, of his property he was free to to synthesize and consume as he saw fit. the The laws of this land did not apply to Alexander Shulgin. Yeah, like he's 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 in a category that you can't even begin to comprehend, because they needed him. He was he was their expert. He was the expert on basically everything. Like when it come to, came to psychoactive compounds. Alexander Shulkin was the guy you asked. <laughs> so that was sort of his condition. He had he had a full exemption. Everybody knew what was going on on his property. Nobody touched him. Nobody ever fucking touched him. Nobody touched him. He he and his friend group were free to experiment and use as they saw fit. Yeah. Ah. Uh.
the untouchable, if you will. Yeah, and the free market has failed you in the market of drugs, Kaiser. A hundred percent. Reactor of getting fucked up says reverse thread. Non-binary. He must have been white. Um, swarthy. Classically excluded from white. Uh, new school included in white. Swarthy. What was he? I, he's like of Jewish descent or something like that. Okay, then yeah. Yeah. So. Um, let me just make sure here. He must have been lacking in melanin. <laughs> Russian, <laughs> Russian Jew. Russian. Okay, well then, yeah, definitely not white back in the day. Yeah, swarthy. Yeah, Russian Jew. Swarthy. Um. So, yeah, just just one of my heroes. I was like, you know what? If there's anything I want to read, dude, that book. I, I've I've had that. I've had that copy of that book since I was 14. Not Jesus can, Christ. Yeah. That, that book has been through many moves. It's been through many iterations. It's been through many cycles of life. Um, that book is responsible for a lot of, a lot of things, <laughs> a lot of waves that have been created, a lot of ripples, um, a lot of tsunamis in my personal life. That book is like legitimately responsible for. Um, that was the book that put me on the path. That was the book that like, oh shit. Right. Because it was it was it was electronic music leads into rave culture. Right. So Internet leads to electronic music, leads into rave culture, leads in, leads into MDMA. Well, the way my brain works, I want to know what it is. I want to know about it. Who is one of the foremost experts on MDMA? This guy named Alexander Shulgin. What is oh, this is the seminal tome by Alexander Shulgin. Well, phenethyl means I have known and loved, get, enters the library. I start just, you know, the way you can only do when you're young, right? Consuming the book, just consuming the book. Um, it was life-changing. It was like, holy shit, I can hack potentially existence itself, right? Like that's depending on your, your mapping of reality, depending on your mapping of, you know, your, your under underpinning philosophies, right? Either way I can hack my brain or maybe I can hack existence. Uh, either way to a 14 year old me, <laughs> I'm in, what do I need to do? So he taught me basically everything I needed to know for quite some time. Uh, I have not read a whole, I think I've read like some of Ram Dass, uh, Corey, like, like excerpts, never, never anything in totality. Um, you know, funnily enough, our introduction to psych psychedelics were pretty right. much one to one. On the other hand though, what we got from it entirely different <laughs> just completely off to different tracks um just because you didn't have the it you know what that's fair yeah but either way i just i i got i got more of that like holy fuck anyone trying to like understand this is either insane or is lying and that's kind of where i'm at it's like you if you're trying to tell me you understand what the fuck is in that void, I call it. I, I call it. You the, know the uh, the deep dark pool <laughs> that everybody uh, everybody does a deep dive into, and we're all just trying to go for a time record on, but nobody's really? everybody ever been able to hit the bottom. Yeah, it's kind of my. That's actually a good way to describe my feelings on it. It's just like don't don't fucking patronize me and tell me that you figure that shit out. Well, I don't even. I'm in the camp. I long arrived in the camp that. The words will, it is truly ineffable. Words will never truly do it justice. Um, but with that being said, it is our responsibility and our duty as psychonauts to attempt to describe, to attempt to put words to, to attempt to collapse down the multidimensional aspect of whatever the fuck that is into some translatable version to at least attempt to have the conversation with people for sure hey monica i just told everyone in colorado you're cool and smart is there I'm like a, is there a meeting 
<laughs> they're like, I'm fucking, it's like, I, I didn't, I think that would make the news today in Colorado. Every fucking member, every citizen of Colorado gathered in the fucking, what's, what's the dome or bowl in Colorado? I'm sure they have one. It was meet me. The council of Colorado has declared it. <laughs> if you didn't receive the memo for going to that, uh, meeting that's kind of a uh, it's kind of bad <laughs> i know right but, right is a meeting without telling you like there is like some governance problem uh, in, in colorado <laughs> um it was in a meet me i'm popular uh people know me i'm rainbow in denver level head said it's true we did because levels in colorado as well uh the colorado council declares kai to be based um amazing wither said oh, uh, but there were probably some kind of a ratio, like 51 persons wanted to get you out of Colorado and the rest wanted to say you're based or something like that. I'm not, I you mean, to I, know the numbers. yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not even in Colorado, so it's, you know, it's fine. Like it's, but you know, it's the council of Colorado has approved of me. So if I ever need to seek refuge, I know where to go. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, I had a question about uh, anarchism uh, because right now I'm, in a cooperative that uh, works basically on uh, anarchists and uh, ecologist principles. And uh, I feel like a lot of people are misunderstanding some uh, topics. So that's why I wanted to ask you uh, questions because you're more knowledgeable than me about anarchism, at least I think. <laughs> and uh, do you feel like uh, even if there's no ruler, it's important to have procedures uh, and uh, things like that in a uh, an anarchist group what was the what was the the positional term that you called them the posi um i would say uh, it's kind of complicated because you know it's a cooperative we are 330 people in that cooperatives okay and so there's a uh, lots of different principle of uh, being a uh, democratic uh being uh, as a uh, horizontal as possible and um uh, you're always gonna you're, you're always gonna have like appointees of some sort the the critical posi the critical nature of those positions needs to be um instant recall and answerable to the uh to the the, the general populace um so like they should not be in a position of representation they should be in a position of delegative power so like as long as as long as these characteristics are being upheld and that like if any time somebody goes they are not representing me correctly you can do something about that and action that 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 feeling that belief that knowledge that information um then it's it's adherent yeah, like uh, that's and in order to do that, like uh, normally you have some kind of procedures where you can uh, get to back to those people who will uh, stop taking too much uh, power into the organizations, right? Correct. Yeah, there needs to Correct. be it, there needs to be instant recall, basically. That's yeah, yeah. That's it, people need to be removable at a at a moment's notice. And on top of that, normally you try to set frames with some kind of text where people. Um, display the principles that uh, rule the world organization, right? Yeah, there should be some sort of agreed upon scope by yeah. the group. Okay, so it's fine to know that I'm not crazy. <laughs> no, you're just... <laughs> because that's, you're, well, I mean, you are French, so the, the it's still out. But that's... <laughs> on, that, on that topic, no, you're perfectly sane. No, no. So the thing is, like, uh, the cooperative is not exactly working uh, like that. And some uh, people have managed, due to their position, kind of to uh, take uh, to take some positions of power. It's, Let's say it like it's, that. It's generally I refer to it as substitutionalism, and then leading into professionalism. It's somebody who takes some sort of um, p position. And then substitutes in a series of um, like role definitions, scope definitions, or otherwise sort of subsumes a set of powers for themselves, and then transitions that into what becomes a professional role. All of a sudden, they're like, "Well, I'm the manager." It's like, no. Yeah, I mean, it's not 
exactly to that extent, but it's not that far away uh, from it. Because, like for example, when someone wants to uh, organize a project and this kind of thing, so we put a process in place, but the process is not respected by uh, some of those uh, people, and some of those projects end up um, finishing in some kind of drawer for eternity. So it's kind of uh, problematic. And we right now have, uh, let's say, 10-ish people who are kind of, uh, who are receive salaries and things like that. Mm. Uh, who tends to have uh, more powers than the others. So we end up having a system where people are both, uh, you know, have conflict of interest because they're on both sides of the spectrum. They they work in the, the organization at the same time. They also uh, are societaries, you know, members of the cooperatives. And so they end up having a different status than the others because we needed in the economy that we are have right now like capitalism this kind of things try to find way to adapt their role inside the cooperative with the fact that they can eat and stuff uh, like this so there is an unbalanced of power but because they were trying to organize things, yeah like yes we kind of all anarchists and so we have this big principle and everything will go fine we haven't got into their uh, Principles. So I was uh, trying to go back to the basis and uh, ask someone that is more knowledgeable than me. And the the uh, one you. of one of the um, techniques <clears throat> that is useful for undermining the sort of substitutionalism slash professionalism tendency is um, is sort of a mentoring um, system. If if, well, I'm just going to call them person A, right? Person A is in yeah. that category um, and they're, they're receiving a salary and they, they've got, you know, tendencies or whatever. What you want to do is make sure that there is like everything that every single one of those people do, uh, do should be known to multiple members of the cooperative and you should be able to replace them at a moment's notice. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, kind of the ideas that we have right now. I try to implement the ideas that uh, we should use uh, um, work in uh, binomes, you know? Yes. So every people who work will have someone with, with him like this. If that person have a change of uh, situation in his life, he will have the possibility to have someone that uh, replace him on the go. Because otherwise, if the person just leave because, I don't know, they want to live in Canada or something, <laughs> which is happening right now. Yeah, uh, yeah that's, that's like, also... It, like, they will have someone that can replace them uh, right away and... Uh, Get yeah. a new person with him. It yeah, it, it undermines the power dynamic as well as it's filed generally under social responsibility for anarchists. It's because mm -hmm. you want you want the populace, you want the, 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 the like the members of the cooperative to be able to do the jobs of the cooperative. Right? Yeah, exactly. Like, you may not be able and to so fill that role on a regular basis, but like if shit goes down one night in like, you know, position X is dead and buried suddenly for whatever reason like all the person that yeah. does that position is dead and buried yeah like yeah. you <laughs> you you need to be able to pick up the slack like holy shit it's on me right now what, what does it even entail i don't know what the, it's even about right that's just bad um that's bad cybernetic theory right like as far as distributed topologies go that falls under cybernetic theory and so that's bad for the network um, yeah, so, I understand what you're saying there. Yeah. I agree with that uh, totally. And there is another thing that uh, I try to put in place right now. It's some kind of a chart. Uh, no, chart is not the right word in English. But so some kind of a treaties of like uh, the values that we implement in the in that place. We will uh, kind of um, set lines on how you should. Uh, apply your work inside the the cooperatives like this you can explain like yeah this is kind of uh, not respecting the the, ch the the text so maybe you should uh, try to uh, rethink your work and these kind of things it gives some kind of legitimacy to tell them uh, uh, the fuck off yeah yeah so yeah just yeah train people up on their jobs make sure there's always multiple people that know how to do their jobs uh, make sure that you've got some sort of like scope definitional set for them. Make sure that like the the um, I don't know how I want to put this character or the of the organization also understands that um, 
no one is above anyone. And just because you do a role or a job or a task does not put you in a hierarchical position above them. It just means you do a different job, right? Like that's no matter the perceived importance or not. Um, interestingly enough, one of the, the, the lessons that you can learn from capitalism is like, it's ruthless and it's brutal, but it's, it's necessary for transitional human psychology. I think they need to understand that like they're replaceable. Yeah. And they also need to uh, understand that, uh, administration is, is your friend to, uh, to, uh, make sure that everything is, uh, done the right way and these kind of things, which uh, lots of people, when uh, they come to anarchism, at least where where I live, they tend to think like, yeah, there's no ruler, so there's no rules, and so that's a slippery slope. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that's not the case. And so, yeah, yeah like there's still some room. What? So, yeah, yeah, like, but but it's kind of interesting to be in those, those kind of really big uh, place, like 300 people to uh, start uh, uh, an anarchist co-op. It's kind of a lot. It, and, it's, uh, it's we a have little, a lot of different missions and things like that. And um, it's a little much to like collapse in and start that way once you already have the cooperative and you're going to transition. It makes because everybody needs to be on the pit. That's why, like, if you start like a co-op or a commune and you start with like 15 to 35 people right and you're all on the same page and you're all like you know we're going to organize this way and you get a running structure and everything is you know you set the tonality of the system on the outset transitional states are always messy yeah yeah and uh, we have been in a transitional state since the beginning so it's been like five years that uh, that the place is in transitional states and uh, the problem is like you have a lot of people who are very optimistic about uh, the project but they don't really necessarily have the same principles at the beginning so you have this kind of popular education things to to make where everybody will have to uh, come together on certain principles start to understand what is the best way to work in uh, auto organizing and that makes things uh that makes things kind of uh, complicated because we are not on the same level of uh, understanding of anarchist principles. And so I would, um, uh, Ross, thanks for the uh, raid and host. Um, I would recommend a um, series of weekend team meets. They're, they're such a pain in the ass to do and they're so obnoxious and they're such a time sink. But if you're having trouble getting everybody on the same page, then you need to get everybody on the same page. And the only way to do that is to get a bunch of people together and get them on the same page. Yeah, like taking the time to talk. Like right now, I propose to uh, organize some kind of a congress. Yeah. You know, like, uh, but it takes uh, some time. You know, you cannot just uh, say, uh, let's do a congress in the next week. That's yeah, not dude, how schedule, it works. Scheduling is a nightmare. And especially, like, hurt, it, dude, scheduling anarchists is hurting cats. It just is. Um, so, oh, geez. Will Alexander, I will definitely get to it. Um, I always love Will Alexander's work. Um, so, like, yeah, yeah, I would, I would break them up. I wouldn't try and do a Congress. I would just do a series of like educational weekends or something. I would teach them consensus decision-making. I would teach them about uh, hierarchical organizational structure. I would teach them about the like character and tonality of anarchism and how like the, the, the sort of underpinning of the philosophy that so you drill it into their heads like yeah just, just because you're a manager in an anarchist organization doesn't mean you're a manager the same way that you understand it to be right like yeah so. yeah, yeah. I, I, I exactly uh, get your point it's just that we have some uh, it's a cult- practical problem in order to do that because right now uh, we have a uh, some kind of big warehouse i don't know how to it's thirty thousand square feet something like that jesus but uh the most of the place is in a is still on uh, types of uh, construction sites you know what, what, and are, so you, what do you what do you all, what is your co-op's I, function what do you guys do what what is the cooperative's uh, function what do you okay do? so there's a uh, the idea is to get different types of associations and uh, getting uh, uh places for all of them in order for them to work the best way uh, they can. Right now, we have built uh, 10% of it. So a big part of the work of the cooperative right now is to build uh, that uh, cooperative, which uh, and 
right now there is like three main rooms that have been uh, completed one is some kind of a shop for a lot of like uh, fair trade uh, short cir uh, short uh, circuit organization and things like that one of the goal we uh, have in mind is to uh, make popular education in the district we're in you're building an to, uh, you're building an organizational to, uh, superstructure what? you're building an organizational yeah, a, superstructure like you're building the bones so like if somebody needs to build like a fucking like a farmer's market you can do that you could do a library you could do a x y exactly. or z you're you're creating the organizational superstructure including the space good on you yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's basically what we're doing. So right now there is also like a, a restaurant that is uh, almost ready. Should open maybe mid January. Um, there is a project for like a shared garden where we will uh, teach people uh, in the districts to to uh, grow their own food. Uh, all the the building is using like reemployed uh, materials for other construction sites. So 95% of all the the tools we use for constructions are reused from uh, somewhere else. Uh, there is a project to create some kind of a school inside the building for popular educations and, uh, you know, after school uh, stuff and probably uh, a full school by itself. And uh, there are lots of other projects in it and everything is uh, built in a way to be like eco-responsible and this kind of, of thing. So on paper, even if we have some people who are not necessarily uh, totally uh, leftist in the project, like uh, all the principles you can uh, imagine are very, very uh, left wing. And the problem is like sometimes you also have uh, other issues that occurs uh, regarding uh, I don't know, like, uh, you know, sometimes of uh, reminding people uh, different principles and that uh, thing, the things they can do might not fit those principles. Uh, like, for example, uh, they, for the restaurants, they put uh, some types of fontaine and uh, they decided that, yeah, we can uh, have some uh, carbonated water. And you know who is doing carbonated water right now? It's SodaStream, company from Israel that is under a boycott. Mm -hmm. And the people who made that decision for the restaurants, they didn't know about that. So we had to tell them like, no, that won't work or these kind of things. It's just that uh, there is a lot of like small details like that that needs to be uh, done to the perfections in order to be uh, as, uh, as exemplary as possible for the rest of the world. Because like the idea is like when you organize something like that, you want to uh, set the tone for a better society, you know? I mean, good on you. Good on you. It's a big project. It's a big project. Yeah, yeah. That's it's, a very it's big project. And uh, it's, it, it starts scaring some people. May, but may, at the same time, it's a uh, challenge. where in France? Uh, in Le Havre, in my uh, hometown. Um, I'm going to pretend I know where that is. Um, <laughs> oh, so I see, so I've it's, seen it's worldly. In in... It's, a, it's a big town, but uh, <laughs> not that big. so I seem worldly and uh, like an uh, uh, like an educated American. Is <laughs> oh no, we totally know your guys' geography. I know where France is. Sorry. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of uh, they are on the map. Um, uh, it, it's not that important. It's, what's important uh, I'm just, I'm is just not the curious. place where well, it is. It's like, uh, can it be successful? That's I'm just, like I'm just curious if I, you know, ever want to visit this project. That's all. I just want to, if I would seek it out where I would be going. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's a fascinating thing to be involved in. Um, I yeah, I, 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 I am just quite envious of your opportunity. Yeah. Trust me, there's a yeah. there's a lot of North Americans right now that are sitting here basically cursing you out. They're like, I mean, fuck this, fuck, fuck it, fuck it, fuck, dude. That's that's a level of like getting your shit together that Americans and Canadians definitely do not understand. <laughs> like we're like, dude, that's thirty thousand square feet space multifaceted event space for you know the restaurant and you know whatever else you're going to be using it for for farmers market and education and production and probably a hacker space will end up in there knowing leftists at some point or another right like yeah yeah there is some kind of stuff that we call uh, fab labs 
Okay. Where yeah. uh, you will have uh, some uh, big machineries <laughs> that can be mutualized for different uh, associations inside the buildings. Yep. So there is be like iron works, uh, woodworks inside of it, and uh, and uh, yeah, you know, 3D printers and this kind of stuff. I hate you. So yeah, I'm but, so uh, jealous. That's still uh, that's not for now. That's for maybe in two or three years. But that's still a project. Still, it's yeah, dude. I'm yeah, I'm super jealous. Um, just yeah. know that. Um, but, you know, that is, those kind of things are possible in the U.S. Like you have a lot of building in the Rust Belt, for example, that can be uh, uh, reused by some kind of uh, of uh, I'm, I'm anarchy scops. I'm, I'm waiting for us to balkanize a little more, and then maybe I can convince some Americans. I mean, right. the the thing is, like, you need to uh, create some kind of groups, search for a building, and uh, try. Oh, to, I could, uh, I could, I could source the building. That's not a big deal. Like, that's and, uh, it's it's the people that's the issue in North America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the I, I know of that ability of free movement. Yeah, there is literally just Dayton, Ohio. Like, dude, there's so many like across the Rust Belt. We just be like, you buy the city, dude. That Hassan shit, shit still pisses me off. There's so many locations. He could have just bought a town for that amount of money. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I I don't see how you can do it. Uh, I mean, because I was in Texas uh, in Corpus Christi before. Um, I had uh, this kind of view of Americans that uh, nothing can do out of churches, kind of. And it's it's very difficult to gather people around a project where they will volunteer and these kind of things for a long time. Not impossible, but not to the scale that I'm, uh, that we can do it in France because we have a little uh, more time and a little more protective uh, system. So the yeah. fact that we have a safety net makes this kind of uh, uh, project yeah, easier to build. Yeah, we're 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 like a hundred years, hundred two hundred years behind you. We have to build the dual power. Yeah. We have to build the dual power structure first. Like this is what I lecture people on all the time, right? We we have to build the community gardens. We have to build the the free clinics. We have to build the the public library, uh, the the free libraries. We have to build the educational spaces because we need to transition away from the reliance of the capitalist system and give our people some breathing room so that we can do some grand projects like what you're suggesting. We're not there right now. We, but we, yeah, there might be some opportunities. Like you don't have to be a extra hundred uh, from the beginning. If you can be a uh, ten or fifteen, there are things that you can already do. Oh, it, small scale, we can still work on. But no, yeah, like yeah. what we're talking about at your your scale. Trust me, there's just a lot of us that are jealous right now. Um. <laughs> It's just I didn't do that jealousy. for bragging. I was just uh, nobody. Th nobody right. thought. Nobody thought you were for a second. Um, <laughs> but it was a lot of unrepentant jealousy. Trust me. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I'm kind of uh, lucky that I managed to uh, to grow in that uh, organization that fast because people knew me from uh, before. So when I came back on, in June in France. They kind of incorporate me uh, right away in the uh, pro project trying to, and ask me to find solutions for their governance problems, kind of. But uh, like all the things that you are, have uh, advised were things that I'm uh, trying to implement right now and it takes time. Yeah, I, But I, the I... idea of like a weekend where we try to educate people on those principles, that's a good one. I will uh, definitely try to, to push that too. Yeah, because people can't do what they don't know. So you have to spend time teaching them. Yeah, and uh, that's kind of weird because we have these uh, ideas that uh, adults don't need to be taught anymore. And uh, at the same time, when you want to be non-horizontal, you don't want to... Uh, to teach uh, another adult because you have this uh, principle of like um, symbolic violence, you know, that uh, when you someone teach, uh, when there is a teacher and the students and some kind of hierarchy that is, uh, that is uh, done. So we try to find ways to organize what popular education makes, which is like horizontal kind of uh, learning and reduce that uh, symbolical violence that is inherent to education. But with uh, adults, it's very difficult because they may be very uh, wary of any type of. I will try to explain things to you. Hmm. Um, there's which, which there's at least one yeah. book I have on um, anarchist pedagogies. 
um, mm-hmm. that may lend itself to the to the problem of teaching adults. Um, I could grab yeah. it really quick um, and give you a title if you want to, like yeah, because that's if you can, that would be really nice. Yeah, give me a, give me a second. Um, <laughs> okay, it's around. It's the around stream. here somewhere. The, the stream is off again, uh, boys. <laughs> you, you just need to ask Gary for getting a book, and that's fine. And thus, the egoist takeover can begin once again. <laughs> No, but like uh, making popular education is kind of kind of hard. Did you? Uh, I mean, that's basically what we kind of all do on uh, on uh, Twitch, right? I think yeah, I mean, that's, as a channel, right? I mean, that's the ideal, at least. Yeah, but at least when people come to Twitch and comes to our channels, they kind of uh, I mean, unless they are trolls, they kind of accept <laughs> that they might either have fun or learn or learn something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, real complicated title. Anarchist pedagogies. Um, Fun. Yeah, an- anarchist pedagogies, collective actions, theories, and critical reflections on educations. It's edited by Robert uh, Howarth. Um, but who published this? This is PM Press um, that published this. So that's probably an easy way to find it. But there are, like, a part of this book is for, like, analysis of educational, uh, like, pedagogies. You don't need that shit. But, like, section two, um, the uh, in the here and now section on, like, anarchist pedagogy in action, spaces of learning, free school, um, street medicine, anarchism, and uh, ciencia popular, um, that sort of thing. Uh, like, in a crowded place between strangers for the dialogue. I think some of that may be useful for you. So... Yeah, so that's uh, that's nice. Uh, we, I found the uh, I googled the the, the the things and I found the, the book in uh, cool, cool. right away. So All I right. will uh, try to find it and uh, have a look at it. It's, yeah, uh, Sec- a good idea. Section two. Anyway, right. anyway, thanks for your advice. It's just that uh, talking about farmers markets, I need to go there to, <laughs> today. <laughs> so, I, keep um, keep keep us keep us abreast. I wanna I wanna know like also I want pictures of the space. Quite frankly, just for me. Oh, like, uh, that's another problem. We need to get uh, our website uh, done, but I can uh, let a link in uh, the chat. Cool. Uh, give me a second. Um, yeah, I'd love to. I'd love second. to see the space. Yeah. Um, um, the place right now, like the websites, like uh, the guy who uh, organized it, he needs to uh, to work on it back. So. Um, you will have a small idea, but everything is in French, and uh, we have an Instagram thing. But same, uh, the one of the main uh, guys that is uh, being a problem right now is working the communications things, and he's like oh, pretending like, oh, I even, cannot do. Uh, it's even got a the, cool name. The website, I cannot do this, I cannot do that, and he's kind of. Uh, it's even got a cool name, Le Hanger Zero. Oh fuck you yeah. guys! Oh, <laughs> this is this is great. Uh, yeah, that was the name of uh, the place at the beginning, and uh, zero now stands for uh, zero carbon, zero uh, excluded people, and uh, zero uh, waste. Yeah, and so you we uh, use containers to uh, build a different space and things like that. And there is like, a, and everything is built by volunteers. It's volunteering that are uh, building all the, the, the places, all the alveoles, all the walls, and this kind of stuff. Is cool. there anywhere we could donate? What? Is there anywhere we could donate? To like these? Uh, you, don't need to, you don't need to donate. I mean, that's, that's not uh, nah, how we work. Like, if no, you want no. to do so, something, you don't give your money, you just come and help. Right. Well, Which is we're, something we're that is. A, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, but the, the, the problem is like, uh, and I, I feel that was a problem in the US when I was there, like uh, when people do campaigning, so instead of uh, campaigning yeah. and go door to door and uh, talk to their neighbors, they just give money and uh, yeah. and uh, hope for someone else to do that. And you end up with like a weird companies, like I remember in Corpus Christi, like that things where you have that uh, companies that were working for seven different candidate, candidates with different programs. 
So you have the same volunteer, uh, volunteers, no, the same uh, guy who were paid working on seven different campaigns at the same time. And you end up with a, with a weird systems where every people who were there either were homeless, uh, getting out of jail, <laughs> or these kind of things. That's the very weird systems where the people on probation will uh, start to do a campaign and calls for for the rest of the world when they, for the rest of the citizen in the US while themselves they don't have the right to vote um which note is, is, note to your web developer um due to the, yeah, he sucks yeah due, <laughs> due to the uh, due to the element structure of the page nothing can be translated um, yeah 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 I know so we have and and the, the sad part is like we have a uh, lots of people who will be able to translate uh, that in uh, many different languages. I would not even uh, consider myself as the best one to to put it in English. So <laughs> so it's kind of a uh, sad Fuck. that uh, it's doing a better work on that. So here for 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 the geographically challenged uh, Americans. All right, so here's here's France. You fuckers. Um, but here's here's where it, we're going to zoom in here. Yeah, so it's on the other side of the D-Day beaches. And the fun part is like that city was uh, liberated by Americans after they liberated Paris. Actually, two months after they liberated Paris. We were one of the last uh, cities in France who were liberated. And the UK, knowing that they will win the war, decided to bomb the city, uh, and 80% of it was destroyed by uh, in World War II by the UK because they didn't want uh, France to get their economy back on track too fast. Yeah, is, it, is, is it just is it just this gray structure right here at the end, or is it this entire fucking building? It's the gray structure plus the gray uh, the gray place uh, next to it. Yeah, uh, on the left. The hangar, okay. I'm guessing. Okay. And so, uh, and the part on the right are uh, kind of a place where we park cars. For like, but it's uh, it might be later on uh, utilized. And uh, you see that gray uh, green area too uh, on the 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 right. We uh, might have project to there in the future. Jesus Christ, I love it. Love everything about it, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's a very uh, good project. We hope that we will be able to keep it on track with the principles that lead it at the beginning. You know, like uh, when you look at in the history of different anarchist uh, communities or communist communities or whatever, there is always a moment where things can uh, become uh, blurry uh, due to the contact of that uh communities to uh, the rest of the world and how the rest of the world uh managed the existence of those kind of uh out of the scope of capitalism systems so yeah i we hope that it will, it will do it anyway i need to go to the farmer's market it's been a really nice talking with you keep, and keep, uh, keep me updated keep me updated yeah yeah i will keep you updated all right have a good Bye. have a good day man no problem Oh, the life of geez, fucking, just fucking, just fucking. I know. Imagine actually bad. getting to participate in anarchism. Oh, fucking in in that sort of. Uh, also, you know, he's about to run down to a French farmers market too. By the way, I don't know if any of you have ever seen a French farmers market. Nope. <laughs> it's fucking. Everything about that. Everything. I need to fetch butter. You French fuck. <laughs> Everything about that was so worthy of jealousy. Every Europeans, man. And cheese. And cheese. <laughs> Might as well just pick up some more wine while he's there. <laughs> One of my favorite things about Europe is that it's actually not normal to have like a huge fridge because you usually just buy your ingredients the day of. They don't inflate it out of that shit in the ass just to make you pay for food. To be fair, there is something to be said about like how that kind of structure can leave people kind of fucked if they ever needed to be isolated. Oh. 
everything about that was worthy of jealousy. That's all I have to say. Good shit. Um, Jeff- yeah, I just seen your bio saying your. Cool. Um. <laughs> Good memes. Apparently, Bud isn't legal there, though. I'm pretty. Oh, that give it hurts. a minute. Yeah, that hurts. Well, here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. That's a port. They don't care. That's but a still. port. Yeah, that's a port city. That's a port city. That's a European port city. All right. Like that's the definition of. There's probably some shit coming in from Spain via North Africa. Or via Spain from North Africa, some uh, actual like North African, Moroccan, hashish and shit like that that they're fucking getting. <laughs> don't don't worry about it too much. Um, I am uh cra- crave. I have progressive small fiber, non-length dependent polyneuropathy. <laughs> is is the full is the full mouthful. Uh, but the long and short of it is just my nerves are being eaten alive by my body and I'm in constant pain. So, um, yeah, Ross, it's France. They smoke. Um, and this is why the pe- wife people hate the French. It honestly, I think a lot of it is jealousy. I think a lot of it is jealousy. Like that's, it's just like, God damn it. They have it good. Um, I, you know, <sighs> look. I don't know how many of you have ever had like a properly pre- prepared French beef bourguignon or something like along those lines. Um, but all I can assure you is that like when those peasants were plotting the overthrow uh, of the royals, they were eating amazingly well despite the fact that they were starving, right? Like this is, this is the pinnacle of food is French peasant food. It's, it's some of the best food in the world straight up uh especially from a culinary technique standpoint so they're like yeah you know what i'm gonna eat well i'm gonna sop up this like beef beef broth gravy with this freshly prepared baguette i'm gonna go chop some heads off some royals we'll make an afternoon of it just saying not terrible being french unless you're a counter-revolutionary or accused of being one yeah, well, you know, just don't be one. <laughs> well, that's the that's be, the problem. Be a, be a <laughs> be a very adamant supporter, <laughs> right? Be the guy. Be the guy that people are like. He's a counter revolutionary, and they're like him. No. <laughs> no. Personal morals be damned. Um. All right. So, what did Will Alexander hit me with? Will Alexander hit me with. Do you believe it's possible to be a Robert without actually stealing things? My 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 friend Rob wants to become a bank Robert, and I endorse he goes into banking. But I worry he will steal. <laughs> I can. You know what? Let's compromise. Be a lawyer. <laughs> oh, Will Alexander. Um. Police would raid that place in most uh, in most states. Yeah, they would actually. Like that. Yeah, hundred percent. That fucking space would be like under like constant supervision. It'd be under concert supervision. It'd be fucking ridiculous. <laughs> German, but French people. Um. Yeah, multifunction, ba- multifunctional uh, bagel slicers. Um. There's a there's an old scene in um. I don't think it was a Cook's tour. It may have been a Cook's tour. It was it was Anthony Bourdain. I'm just trying to remember if it was a Cook's tour or no reservation. Um, or no reservations. He was with his buddy Samir um, in Russia, and they were looking at one of the palaces, and they're just chilling next to each other in this sort of like, I don't know, open air cart sort of situation. And Tony looks over at Samir and goes, you know what? I could see storming those uh, storming those steps. And Zamir's like, "What?" And Tony's like, "Yeah, no, ripping the heart out of royals, rushing those steps, ending the day with some vodka, some good goulash." Yeah, I could be Russian. Zamir's just looking at him like, "Okay," like, "No, yeah, I get it, I get it." Ah, uh, hey, you're welcome, Pastique. It, it honestly, Pastique, it always comes down to education. I, I legitimately, like, I, I sincerely believe that. Like, it's kind of the cornerstone of just everything. Um, but especially for anarchists, most of it just boils down to education. 
people don't know and they need to know. And the only way is you got to teach them. You can't expect things from people that they don't have any knowledge of. So it's like, well, I have no knowledge of this. I have no theoretical knowledge of this. I have no experience doing this. How could you expect me to behave that way? Fair enough. So it's sort of like on the job of the anarchist to sit them down, teach them, show them, and then expect it of them. Um, but, you know, can't, can't have those unfair expectations. <clears throat> now, my question is, is Monica still here? I don't know. Monica, you still here? I think that timeout, that's been 10 minutes, right? That's been 10 minutes. That should be 10 minutes. It's got to be. I'm, I, I, I'm pretty sure we're far past 10 minutes. Um, I, I got tired of it. Fucking, I, I, I didn't comment, but like I saw it. It was getting a little spammy. I get it. It wasn't just that. She was just like purposely acting ignorant. And that like that irks me on a very like specific level. Um But we'll see. Ok lastet ihr schon weide uber eins uns fucking I don't devil language. <laughs> that fucking there's something deeply I there is something deeply wrong with the German language. Um oh are you talking about us again? Kappa. That's uh, yeah. Yeah, we always are. Um. Oh, fucking, that was heartening and that was the definition of bittersweet. Yeah, that's what that was. That was bittersweet. I love to see that it's happening. Um, I I appreciate that it's happening. I love that it's happening. Uh, I love that somebody in my community can show me that it's happening. Um, and I absolutely despise that it's happening in France and not here. Um, we should consider moving to France. Dude, fucking Corey was calling that shit partway through. I don't know if y'all saw fucking Corey in, in chat. Corey's like, dude, we're losing him. Kai's going to be on a plane in six months. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I thought, uh, I thought like, what do you mean losing him? We've already lost him. The only, <laughs> like the only problem is that they just, he, he needs to get like, Fucking white, you know. I'm just gonna say wifed up for lack of a better phrase. Hmm, fair enough. And he's out, and he's gone. <laughs> Same here. I want, I want out too. Um, I don't want to learn anybody else's language. That's my issue. I, I, I can't see you in the UK. I, I, I oh no, I just, God no. I would go like. I mean, we know my, we know my, my preferential order is always based on beaches. Um, yeah. so that's like, what I'm saying. I, I can't, I can't yeah. imagine you handling all that fucking rain. No, I, I'm okay with the rain. I just, uh, you know, yeah, the UK just, I can't, I can't. Um, but like Australia would be my top pick. Um, you know, I could, I could see you doing that. Yeah, Australia would be my top pick. Just fuck off to a corner of the globe. They got amazing beaches, and they're just completely isolated. Um, the only problem with that one is China, dude. <laughs> fucking China's getting a little pushy in that part of the world. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, I, I could do Australia. Um, that would that would be probably choice number one. Um, Spain and Portugal have some amazing beaches. Um, and but I don't speak Spanish Spanish. I speak Mexican Spanish. <laughs> Spanish Spanish is fucked. Um, so like I'm I'm a um, Yo vivo en España. <laughs> um, them and their fucking lisp. Um, <laughs> I mean, to be fair, that's the the right. I can't even bring myself to say that's the right way to say it. But it's like, not. Fuck, I'm it's, sorry. It's cringe. There's like three people that speak. Yeah, nomad. It's called European Spanish. Fucking. There's like three people that speak it. Right. Like when yeah. you compare it Latin to Latin America, outpaces them. Yeah. Fucking, I'm sorry. I'm gonna speak Spanish the way the majority of people speak Spanish. <laughs> yeah. And a name from Spain. <laughs> sorry, y'all. Y'all lost control of that one. That's like, oh, you mean you mean uh it, the UK English? No, bitch, English. You know the way the Americans speak it. Like you, you're you're an island of like four people. Fuck off. <laughs> oh, populism. Oh, yeah. Uh, also, Nomad, to answer your earlier question, uh, Marxist-Leninism is pretty oh. fucking cringe. 
Yeah, they're not but, a, fucking, I mean, you know, late night or anarchism, mean, trademark. Fuck MLs. <laughs> I'm, I've been, dude, you should just, I don't know if you heard me last night. I'm fucking, fuck, fuck Russia, fuck the USSR, fuck China, fuck the CP, CCP, fuck Deng, fuck Mao, fucking, I was just like right down the list. I'm like, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. I don't have any time. I don't, I, you know. Yes. Fuck worker em. states have been pretty historically oppressive towards anarchists and subsequently the and workers. workers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's fucking, worker uh, states are pretty oppressive towards workers, interestingly enough. Yes. Not quite what you'd expect, but... Is the know. worker states or proletarian state? I've seen both thrown around. I fucking, you know, either way. Fuck the Chinese government there. All right, anyway. But isn't that technically what proletariat means? Yeah. Look, don't ever underestimate the larpiness of 14-year-old MLs on Twitter. <laughs> like don't, uh, don't try to don't try to fucking <laughs> That's a losing battle, Caboose. I just, you know, yeah. I I Okay, so I'm guessing Monica isn't here. Uh <laughs> That's going to be, dude, somebody's going to hear about that. <laughs> somebody's going to hear about that. <laughs> oh. You know, I'll, I'll take the heat for that. Just throw me under the bus when it comes up. Fair enough. Throw Caboose under the bus. Got it. Fun times. What? <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, oh, old Booth? Booth was a Hollywood guy's assessment. <laughs> <laughs> that guy was special. He was special. Um, no, I bet. I don't. I don't fucking. Uh, what's the anarchist conception of economics? Well, that's a weird, weirdly phrased question. Uh, I'm just gonna say yes and <laughs> leave it at that. Uh, we have anarchists will utilize a variety of. Let's, I, you know what? We'll big boy this one. Um, <laughs> non news leftist throws other leftists under the bus. Um, <laughs> anarchists, <True. laughs> anarchists will utilize a variety of economic modalities of operation up to and including market strategies, non market strategies, gift economies, communalist familial style uh, mechanisms of trade. It varies depending on who you're talking to, what location you're in, what time period you're in. It, it again, you know, Amaris is fair with the just chaos, like everything. Um, no, but there is there's a variety of strategies that anarchists will use. But um, generally speaking, the capitalist modality is out. Um, and generally, we're very suspicious of anybody who identifies themselves as a market anarchist, just as a general shibboleth. It's, it's one of those, like, you know, mm, we may have an and cap in our midst moments. Um, but there are valid market strategies um, as anarchists. Yeah. I mean, anarchists will even align, uh, like, I mean, depends on if I want to know true Scotsman, these fuckers, they'll even, you know, there's perfectly valid forms of anarcho-syndicalism. And syndicalism is just a moderated form of capitalism at the end of the day. So, I mean, there's an argument to be made there. But... Um, Generally speaking, not a fan of capitalism. Um, so alternatives that sp that um, spring forth from the idea of fuck capitalism, start there. Um, yeah, yes, and the automated post scarcity space stuff. Yes, yeah. Can't can't forget to mention the automated post scarcity space stuff. Um, I'm definitely not reaching into a drawer. That's that's definitely. Uh, I'm definitely uh, this is a hundred percent flavored tobacco uh, in this pipe that I'm taking out that I, uh, um ooh, wee, that's yeah, like decorative pipes yeah decorative pipes um do you see economic planning compatible with anarchism it depends by what what we mean by economic planning like is it a, as an actual like just a general terminology economic planning sure it can be compatible um, historical context, economic planning, probably not. Um, yeah, we're not, we're not pro command economy just to be clear. Yeah. Like if just we're, we're talking, if we're one. talking Chilean neoliberal planned, uh, planned economics. Yeah. We're out. We're out. Kind of in the name. Yeah. So it, 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 let's just say we're hesitant. 
Um, yeah, it, let's let's just say that I'm I'm gonna need to see that plan. Um, and given like it, it, given who's implementing it and how it's being implemented, it would fall under centralizing authority uh, authoritarianism, and we would just be out the door at that point, um, and potentially donning balaclavas. So, you know, yeah. Um, yeah, somebody posted something like hit it weird with the fucking people who. Oh, there it is. Like it, it was Sunset, whoever... Oh, Comrade Sunset, that's who it was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> with a reply. Oh, oh, Jesus. Okay, so... Uh, oh, I thought of this while lying in bed last night. Caboose. Um, oh. oh, no. That Nostalgia Critic video was so bad that we used that fucking anime as a palate cleanser. God. Okay, that's how bad that video actually was, is we went to that. And you we were, look, I'm just going to talk around and above some of you. I'm sorry, you were either on the call or you weren't. I'm not going to talk about what this fucking anime was. Um, but yeah, we used that we used that anime episode as a palate cleanser for Nostalgia Critic. That's how bad that Nostalgia Critic episode was. For context, I... Me and Kai are both big uh, Pink Floyd fans. I told them about the Nostalgia Critics review of the Wall. We couldn't even get through five minutes. Uh, no, we got to we got to the nine minute and like thirty some minute uh, is thirty some second. Mark. Yeah, we yeah we couldn't get through it. No, it was forty minutes long. I came up on the ten minute and I was like, I can't do this. And then we used and Beast was there. Beast goes, "Fuck, you're right." Um, if a comrade said uh, Sunset said. Uh, Fuck! As a child raised on Pink Floyd, that video hurt, dude. Fuck it. The, we we the used... more you were paying attention to the Nostalgia Critic video, the more you were paying attention to that anime after. Because I was like, why the yeah. fuck is everyone like horrifyingly mesmerized by this? Because we were trying to wash the fucking taste of that shit video out of our mouth, and we were using <laughs> the most potent mouthwash known to man, apparently. Dude, that was some fucked up shit. That anime was questionable. Honestly, though, it was pretty funny. Oh yeah, yeah, it was le it was legitimately funny. Where the fucking nostalgia critic was just desperately trying. He was try hard, and the anime was just like, "Oh shit, man, this exists." <laughs> oh, uh, I was. Um, let's see. Uh, I was so glad not to give a shit about a nostalgia critic by the time it came out. It got sent to me and it hurt internally. It's fl it's flavorless tobacco. This episode brought to you by the chairman uh, chairman Maui Wowie's brand tobacco pipes. Um, Mosh, what video? Um, nostalgia critic, uh, Pink Floyd, The Wall. Um, as far as I'm not talking about what anime we watched. That's, that's yeah, that, that's that's off the table. That's off the table. That's, yeah, like we're not talking. That, 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 go, that goes with us. That goes down we with are us. We're not discussing it. Yeah, no. <laughs> but fucking the people who were on the call were taking that one to the grave. <laughs> There's already enough uncomfortable questions to ask us. So let's not put more out there. Okay, so okay, so nomad, if that's what you mean by economic planning, no, it's cringe. Get out of here. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, that's out. Fucking Nomad, 100%. That's, like, just wholesale out. Uh, <laughs> also, Ross... We're not... You, you not can't be a Marxist fans of the anarchist. Communist Party. <laughs> also, Ross, you can't be a Marxist and an anarchist. They're kind of, like... I mean... Not diametrically opposed, but, like, you'd, you'd be crossing some lines that both would be uncomfortable with, like... If you were, I mean, if you were like, I'm a Marxist, yeah, like if I've, if you were like, I'm a Marxist in the sense of Marxian critiques of capitalism, but not Marxian solutions, and that was the nuance you wanted to throw on top of it. I could, I could vibe with that, I, like maybe not vibe, but I could accept it. Right, um, but what I'm saying is like there would also be there would also be plenty of anarchists that would also reject that as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like I'm, 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 look, I'm probably the most accept, I'm one of the most accepting fucking anarchists you fucks will ever meet, right? Like yes. I'm, I'm willing to, I'm willing to fucking open the door. Trust me. Like most anarchists behind the scenes are like, close the door, close the door, close the door. <laughs> Very much so. And that's why they're, that's why they're irrelevant. Yeah, basically. Yeah. I'm, I'm basically the only relevant anarchist. Um, 
Very true. Um, oh, but yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you, Rex. Um, for better or for worse, right? Like, I, as far as I'm concerned, like, if you don't let anybody... In, Look, you just have you have like a solid bouncer staff in the clubhouse, right? Like if if there's the anarchist clubhouse, you have like some big Samoan motherfuckers working the door, right? But the, the, it's basically just like, look, everybody gets in, everybody gets a shot, and then you hear some dude off off by the bar yelling at some chick about how she needs to be a traditional wife, and you're like. He got to go, right? And so, so two big Samoan motherfuckers just walk over there, pick him up, and toss him out the door like some fucking um, like Jazzy Jeff, Prin uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air shit, right? Whoop, you got to go, right? But everybody should get a chance. It's just you know, if you prove yourself non-compatible, then well, sometimes you got to go. That's all. But um. Yeah, I'm the most loved president of all time, Donald Trump. Oh, God. Fucking. Uh. Did you hear about, like, his followers turning on him again for admitting he took the booster? Yeah, we watched the clip. Oh, fun. Yeah, we, we played the clip with fucking Bill O'Reilly next to him and fucking DT and fucking Bill O'Reilly both fucking going. Like, both of them are like, trying to get the audience to, like, don't do that. You're making us look bad. Yeah. That's funny. Um, and, um, who said that? Fucking, oh, it was red. Yeah, anarchists were gulagged, uh, almost immediately by communists. No thanks, please. Um, we weren't really gulagged that much, to be perfectly honest. Anarchists didn't get yeah. gulagged much. Yeah, um, we were slaughtered. Yeah. We yeah, got more shot in the back and artilleried. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, we tended like, to- they, they didn't even, tr they didn't, even, they did not want the possibility of, like, a prisoner anarchist uprising happening. Yeah. They fucking, it was kill on sight. We're well, most only specifically after we had turned the tides on any chance of the white army, like winning the war, completely decimating their opportunity. So once we yeah. had used our purpose, purpose, we served our purpose. Yeah, that's dude. We're we're considered walking weapons. You know that, right? Like that's why everybody considers anarchists super fucking dangerous because the the ideology, the philosophy, the knowledge base, the information information set that. A, a properly educated anarchist carries with them is super fucking dangerous everywhere it goes. It's dangerous to communists. It's dangerous to capitalists. It's dangerous to somebody trying to run a prison. It's dangerous to anybody trying to run an economy. It's dangerous to like anarchists are classified as dangerous no matter where you go because the ideas that we have a tendency to spread um really dismantle systems of hierarchy pretty effectively and when you're trying to run a prison or a gulag or a police state that shit turns on you pretty quick so good night sunset sleep well it's Take amazing how much people start to listen when you go just do whatever the fuck you want who gives a shit <laughs> you know this is bullshit right what yeah all this is bullshit you're just agreeing to it it's not even real like who's who's your boss like it was fucking what does that even mean right like, like why, why do we why do we carry colored pieces of paper in our pocket that decide whether we can eat or not yeah like it, it's 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 bullshit right and the next thing you know you've got the uh you've got the co's uh aligning with you, you get a couple of co's that are agreeing with the prisoners and you get the fucking prisoners coordinating and the next thing you know you've taken over the prison <laughs> that's it's real simple like a prison riot happens like that that shit fucking it takes months and years to build and then in, in an instant they have lost control of the prison it is it, it is a, a spectacular thing to witness from a historical perspective from a contemporary perspective like that's dude um one of the best prison riots to um study was uh attica new york it was a good one they took that bitch o over, <laughs> like straight up. Like this is ours. Um. Uh, let's see. I can say physically, sexually, and largely politically, <laughs> me and Kai don't have much in common. But I do hear something I agree with and learn at one. Uh, I tune in. Um, and at once I tune in. Real recognizes real, and he's a cool, interactive motherfucker. Thank you, Chris. Um. Uh, yeah. I. I. You know. Keep it 100. No, fuck it. <laughs> uh, when keeping it real goes wrong. Back when Dave Chappelle was actually funny. 
Um, my grandfather had to take a written oath that he was not an anarchist when he became the uh, became a U.S. citizen. World War One. I'm a seventh son of a seventh son. Why the vast age gap? Interesting, Rex. Um, yeah, no, that's 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 you still have to do that. By the way, you still Are have you fucking serious. Yeah, you still have to do that. You have to swear allegiance to the United States, and you have to swear that you're not a communist, an anarchist, and a couple of other things. Yeah, like that's still on the books. Like you can't you can't be an anarchist and get U.S. citizenship. Fun times. Um, let's see. <sighs> Immigration Act of 1903, a.k.a. the Anarchist Exclusion Act, um, codified previous immigration law, added four inadmissible classes. Some of these um, <clears throat> have been re uh, revoked. Some of them have not. Um, inadmissible classes, anarchists, people with epilepsy, beggars and importers of prostitutes um it's pretty wide spectrum right it had minimal impact and its provisions related to anarchists were expanded in the immigration act of 1918 it basically it, the um the immigration act of 1903 is in response to haymarket in 1886 it took it took a bunch of years, but basically it was the uh, the IWPA's like manifesto in 1883 that led to a whole series of like knock on effects, um, and then like the Chicago anarchists that published Free Society, which uh, included Emma, um, basically started releasing a whole bunch of fucking propaganda, and that's part of what got Emma kicked out of um, out of the country, uh, deported. And so, yeah, that was that was the Immigration Act of 19, uh, 1903. It was basically like anarchists aren't allowed in. Fun. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. Um, life is an anarchist in the U.S. <laughs> we are we're, we're actually a persecuted group, like legitimately. Like we're anarchists are actually persecuted in the U.S. Like properly. Um, at an explicit level, <laughs> like that's there's not many books, uh, not many laws on the books that are like black people bad, black people illegal, right? There's plenty of laws on the books that are anarchists bad, anarchists illegal. So we're a properly legally persecuted group in the U.S. Um, so. Um, where's some Christian, where's some Christian evangelicals? I want to learn how to, uh, properly adopt a persecution complex. Oh, shit. <clears throat> uh. And in Germany, having a far left ideology is a no go if you want to become a citizen, but you're fine having a super far right ideology as long as you don't belong to certain groups. Uh, well, Lada asked, how is the war on Christmas going? The war on Christmas is going so well that I have a chart showing um, that uh, snowfall. Um, oh, wait. Uh, snowfall over the past many years um, has been disappearing. So basically, we have taken the war on Christmas... So we have won it so effectively that um, the average snow depth on Christmas Day has been dropping steadily. There's a small spike, but it is, it's been dropping as a trend since the 1950s. So basically since the evil lefties started taking over and undoing that, you know, that, that brilliant 1950s American patriarchy, we, that's, that's how effective the war on Christmas is. We, we, we're we so good, we've been getting rid of snow even. So. Versus taking the rainbows, now the snow. Yep. We're hoarding the snow, by the way. It's part of the gay agenda. Very based. Yeah. Snow's ours. Um... Let's see. Wait, I was tagged somewhere. 
I'll introduce you to my father someday. He'll teach you how to prop, have a proper uh, persecution con- uh, complex, conservative persecution complex. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, let's see. Is that okay? I got a ways on that one. <sighs> if Jesus walked the earth today, would Jesus also be warring against Christmas? Yeah, hundred percent. Jesus be like, what the fuck is that bullshit? Well, it's, it's your birthday. Okay, one, wasn't born in December. Two, what the fuck is that shit about? <laughs> <laughs> Buying shit you don't need with money you don't have for a com- over-commercialized holiday that is a, f- uh, a fraud to start with. Cool. Yeah, super Jesus-y. Yeah, I'm sure he'd definitely approve. What's up, Fertus? You French fuck. Uh, Pastique was in here. Oh, yeah, we already we already heard one overly. Uh, see, for two, Pastique's accent, uh, French accent, is thicker than for two's. Really, I feel the opposite. Actually. No, I yeah, I feel I, I I think Pastique's is thicker. You know what? Fuck it, for two's. You want to get on on the line so we can compare your French accent and um, tokenize you? You know what? Actually, here's my take. The reason why I find Pastique's more accent more like. I guess noticeable. It has more presence than produces because, like, uh, you'll hear it occasionally. He just like there are certain words where he'll just go like full American accent or like ha- almost there but not quite. Whereas produce keeps it like mostly French. All right, let's. So it doesn't have that uncanny valley. All right, let's let's hear it. What what's up, my French motherfucker? What's going on, produce? Uh, not much. Waking up. I got my with coffee in hand, and yeah. Yeah, see, I I think I think Fertus's average accent is less French than Pastique's <sighs> average accent. Oh, Isn't that my fun. point? Um, no, my, mine yeah. Pastique is thicker French accent. Am I am I going crazy here? Hold on, folks. Did I just did I just get fucking did I just no. get Bugs Bunny? No, you just got fucking like CTE'd. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, can you use the C word in this chat? No, you cannot. You cannot use the C word because the C word is not my decision about. Uh, Frenchie speaks clear. Uh, says Viva. They're both French. <laughs> um, I can't. Viva. <laughs> um, no, you cannot. That's not a decision that's up to me. Um, dude, Mosh, I have felt that way for ages about the fucking cross thing. Like, even, like, I don't know if I thought about it with or without Hicks influencing that, uh, that thought process. But yeah, like, no, dad, I won't get down there. They're still wearing crosses. Like, legitimately, like, is that the, the thing that you think Jesus wants to see when he returns to Earth is a whole bunch of fucking crosses? Like, that's, that's kind of, like, weird. It's really fucking well, that's weird. That's the, the whole point, like... What's the the, the seal of Solomon? Uh, it's it's a royal <laughs> sigil, right? Um, what do you, uh, I think Hindus have the wheel, like the like it's um, like a symbol of the order of the world, and so on and so forth. We well, I say we because I was raised in the Catholic faith. We have a, we have a symbol of martyrdom. It's it's not like what we like like it, in the early stage of christianity it was the fish uh, it was like the symbol of you know feeding the poor uh, and so no we we hung out to a symptom of you know pain and a victimhood and it, it's nonsense it, it's not how you build pride as a as a community um, pastiques back from the farmer's market. <laughs> um, <laughs> fucking, uh, the tobacco tastes great guys. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, hundred percent tobacco is the C word crucifix. Yes. Uh, as in most European countries, uh, what constitutes a French accent can vary depending on uh, where in the country they grew up. Um, I think you could probably re- remove European. Uh, in that statement, Amaris, uh, as in most countries or most places, uh, what constitutes an accent can vary depending where they grew up. 
Um, Obviously. Yeah. Cool. Um, where where are you like? How how are the French accents divided? Like in in the UK, it's pretty much a north south sort of thing. Um, okay, so you have basically the quote unquote neutral around like the, the Paris basin, and have the north, uh, which is going to be the Ch'ti, which we is, uh, is going to have particularities uh, um, in common with Belgium. Uh, in the you're gonna have the east, you're gonna have the south, which is well, they have particularities in common, but you're gonna have southeast with like the Marseille accent and southwest with Toulouse. Um, yeah, basically, it's interesting. Yeah, Pastique saying in my town there's two different accents just in it itself, <coughs> some accents more known than others. Uh, the Marseille, Marseille accent is very famous. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty... uh, uh, Pastic, correct me if I'm wrong. Does Brittany have a particular accent? What, what, what? When Americans think French accent, what are we thinking? Parisian? Probably. Mm. Yeah, because I like imagine the real French accent. Yes. Yeah, um. that. Yeah, that. Um, oh. completely over the top. Yeah. Um, oh, I didn't show anybody this fucking, this is completely like Tokyo drift style, but this is great. Uh, this was posted by a guy like yesterday on Reddit. This is his military. This is page one of his military vaccination record. Jeez. <laughs> I'm oh, all right. <laughs> yeah. It was like just it, he literally just posted it as like a message. This is my origin uh, original shot record, page one. Does this qualify me as sheeple? How am I still alive? <laughs> it's no, just, of course. So flu yeah, meningitis, hepatitis A, uh, MMR, uh, typhoid. Oh wow, oh, wow. meningococcal influenza, and that's uh, in the army. You say? Yeah. Oh, no, um, military, just military. Hang on. Let's see. We can probably check here, but no, no, this is just military. I don't know. We could probably figure out based on some of these names. Yes. Uh, uh, I'm thinking, wait, hang on. I'm, I'm sorry for, I, I woefully uneducated on, on what constitutes the difference. He's between Air Force. He, he's, <laughs> he's, 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 he's Air Force. He's Air Force. Oh, yes. I'm, so I'm going to, well. G given that, I'm gonna call keep calling it the army. <laughs> um, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, this is this is just a bunch of fucking. I was about to say, if he was in the army, then we'd also have to factor in shit like depleted uranium. <laughs> yeah, it, that's I'm seeing I'm seeing um, like AFRs, which is Air Force Reserves, and mm -hmm. multiples being the stamp and so it would be it would be an army physician that would have so it was an air force uh service record uh but yeah that was page one of his vaccination record <laughs> oh fuck it i i adore these um has his blood been replaced for the vaccines yet it's no? basically it's basically it's basically just bill gates nanobots at this point and and um and like okay so this i had I can't even do the joke in line because I don't know. Would it be like Monster Energy? What are, what are the kids drinking these days? Still monsters. It's still monsters. Mon it? Monsters, it's rock still stars. Monsters. Yeah, but like there are some like fucking hipsters that drink like rock stars and shit and Red Bull. Um, no, that those disgusting are still regular drink. Those are st okay. That's well, I what consider I was get to. That's the that's the one that the really fucked up Kyle's drink now. Bang energy. Bang. Okay. <laughs> Bang. Yes. That's what I want. That's what I want. Okay. So his his blood is essentially just Bill Gates 5G nanobots floating in a syrup of bang. That's Bang and cheap whiskey. Yeah. That's that's probably Bud know. Light. Too. And it, it sloshes to one side occasionally when he oh. um when he takes a corner a little too fast in either his uh, Camaro or Mustang that he is uh, paying uh, just an undue amount of payments on because he got he was a sucker who got taken by the uh, the car dealership that's always directly across the street from these ba uh, military bases um, because they see these dumb eighteen year olds coming miles away. 
Um, uh, it's, it's great. It's great. No, we're doing. It's it's just fine. <laughs> I guess that is true, Red. I'm I'm, pro I'm processing it from a fucking from a Cali point of view. Um, do you hear about the anti-vax protesters in London who? Had yes, yes, I did, Che. Did you hear about the? Are you? Yeah, the anti-vax protesters in London who attacked an Apple store, thinking it was owned by Bill Gates. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh whoa! Here's 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 the punchline that you want. Um guess they they did their own research because the microsoft store was 50 meters away oh uh, cool. no. <laughs> you, you know what it reminds me it, it's my parents calling all my console nintendos yeah. for me i had i had the parents that called everything playstation um mine i'm older than you <laughs> <laughs> yes surprisingly mine actually just referred to them as either the appropriate name for the console or an abstraction such as uh video games um same with mine yeah fun times so well but, congratulations you had parents who give a shit yeah i know right um <laughs> caboose i mean despite i've heard some of your dysfunctional stories caboose but you know hey team functioning mine parents capable of knowing a console's name i'm not gonna s s agree with your summarization there for deuce um oh you want to hear this i have this video of this is just, just just this is delicious um here we'll just watch it it's 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 a dummy getting owned on tiktok um and of course it's like lefty sort of like correcting thing and then the dude just steps in and is like actually here's the truth of the matter um so it's a fun watch um and notice notice the, the check that you're sort of dealing with here and what the original video when he gets a taste of a north african woman and never turns back right so this is the mm -hmm. og video oh, no. hopefully she's talking about her um nationality and not ethnicity because you already know that'll be incorrect very Hello, my friend. I think we've got to start understanding that Africa and Eurasia are connected landmasses. And All right. First off, the absolute baller energy he comes in with, right? I think we've got to start. Hello, my friend. Hello, my friend. I think we've got to start understanding that Africa and Eurasia are connected landmasses. In fact, they're practically one large landmass. Africa and Eurasia are not different dimensions, are not different realms, okay? They're connected. People here don't have to appear a certain way and people here don't have to appear a certain way. You can find people across Asia that appear phenotypically black and people across Northern Africa um, that may appear phenotypically white. The girl you're responding to is ethnically Amazigh, I'm pretty sure, or at least Arabized Amazigh. So her ancestors that she acquires her identity from have been in Africa well before there was even an ancient Egypt. <laughs> now the Amazigh are natively found around the Mediterranean Sea. So of course there's going to be mixing for centuries with people on the other side of the Mediterranean Sea in Europe. And not through conquest, but things like trade. But that doesn't change the fact that they acquired their identity from people they descended from. And that identity, that culture, their language, it all developed and formed in Africa. Not true. Listen, you know there's more pyramids in Sudan than there is in Egypt? And in those pyramids, the, the paintings are of dark skin. The Nilotic people that you identify with are definitely native to the Nile River. And so they would have been present within the boundaries of the Egyptian civilization. But the ancient Egyptians themselves, the <laughs> ancient ethnicity that we refer to when we say ancient Egyptian, spoke an ancient form of the Coptic language. So they were unrelated to the Nilotic people, but they were related distantly to the Nubians. At least linguistically. The Nubians today exist in the state of Sudan, well, the northern state of Sudan. But they weren't Egyptians. They lived in the ancient land of Nubia and were an important trading partner with the ancient Egyptians. But you're actually right. Sudan today has the highest number of pyramids in the world. However, these pyramids were part of the Nubian civilization and were built well after the pyramids of Egypt. No disrespect, it's just that I don't agree. Um, if you don't agree with my response, um, please do reply. 
to this video with a video or with a comment and I'll be happy to listen. <laughs> oh. Just. Some big dick energy there. Yeah. Just absolutely fucking owns her. <laughs> like, basically, you're a hateful cunt and you know nothing. Uh, but I'm going to do it like your college professor would. Yeah. Like, straight up fucking schools her. Like, I, I, yeah, I was like, I'm saving that video. <laughs> oh. It just kind of fascinates me that people don't realize that, like, immigration's been happening forever. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, that, that's just... There, the, there, humans move around. There, there is only there is a, uh, a select set of places we are from. No one has ever moved outside of them. They built walls. They never looked over them. Immigration only happened when white people did a colonialism. Yeah, and you notice he made he made sure to point that out. That you know they did it through trade. By the way, like this is this is how her people ended up looking like this. Like there's this sharing, but it was done through trade. Not oppression. <laughs> Sorry. Like, it just is. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Borders have never changed ever himself. Especially in the Balkans. They've always been the way that they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, cat. They have borders? Is that a new development for them? Yeah. You, you know, there was, uh, there was never this guy called Tito. They, they keep talking about him like he was an actual historical figure. You know, oh. it's always it's always been the same in the Balkans. They've been T T T firm lines in the sand T T that have never been crossed. Tito is, Tito is the Balkans. I, I Jesus. think what you mean to say that there was the Austro-Hungarian Empire with this uh, Franz Ferdinand at the head. <laughs> what, what happened yes. of him? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't quite remember. There's borders. Just don't get too used to them. This beast. Uh, it's a tr it, borders. Borders are like happiness, right? It's a transient state. It's something that you attempt to achieve. It's a goal that you pursue, not not an actual state of being, or at least not when you're in the Balkans. Um, <laughs> yeah. Final Fantasy 2 got replaced by Final Fantasy 7 in my heart. Is that, Am I reading that correctly, Pesty? I didn't grow up playing Final Fantasy. I don't have a soft spot for the JRPGs. I find that weird fucking, like, three party mechanic of, like, just the, like, three or five people fucking doing the weird animation standing there and then fucking, okay, I select it and I do this attack. Like, I, I don't like that. It's an abstraction. I, I, again, I, I, it's a... It's it's a It's a I'm, I'm on Kai's side. I I find it a rather unimpressive genre overall, and other games have done it better since. I mean, but to be honest, often Western. I wouldn't even go that far. Like for me, it's just like it, it's a game of like rock paper scissors, but the result of the correct or incorrect rock paper scissors like decision hinges entirely on how much you've played the game burger man yeah oh yeah, yeah pokemon is a jrpg i'd qualify yeah, pokemon's it. not yeah, even yes. yeah it's yeah, yeah it's just a not even that much quality anymore. yeah like um but you know it's it's an immersion breaking mechanic for me i cannot enjoy the game JRPGs have some of the most like fascinating lore building, like storyline, world building, like the world Character of design. Yes, like I adore all of that, but they have one mechanic that literally ruins the games for me. I hate that mechanic. I it's completely immersion breaking for me. I do not enjoy it. Um the the other like the related mechanic is the card mechanic. I hate that mechanic. I will not play a game that uses that mechanic. That is absolutely obnoxious to me. Like, there's no reason to play that game for me, ever. Um, so, it's the same sort of thing. Like, I cannot play video games with that mechanic. And so, like, the entire category of JRPGs is just shite for me, basically. Or we're still doing Borders jokes, even. Oh, Jesus Christ. The only border to acknowledge are those of my house as a neighbor keeps trying to seize the area I occupy. 
So this is what happens when a mutualist has an egoist neighbor. <laughs> uh, I think you should info the NAP. That's my um <clears throat> That's my blender. Uh no, that's my that's my blender. No, that's my blender. <laughs> I, I'll share with you. It, it could be our blender. No, that's my blender. You can't use my blender. That's my blender. But it just it, the mind fuck. That'd be a see. Good... What's funny is like I couldn't even. I, I'm not even sure who's talking in that conversation. Yeah, it'd be a good. It'd be a good leftist sitcom. You get a you get a solid run out of like uh at, at you know mid season or two if you write it correctly. Yeah. Is yeah. that is that the egoist or the or the mutualist talking? And then you just insert scenarios yes. like that. Yeah. Um, hey, Cricks. I woke up speaking Serbian, had a breakfast in Bosnia, and lunch in Albania, and dinner, dinner in Slovenia, and encountered sheep in Bulgaria. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and that's just because the border was moving around the entire time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I spent a. I spent a month in the area. The border moved around me about 12 times. Jesus Christ. Uh, let's see. Borders are lines de uh, designed by God to show how we are superior and completely different to people living 500 meters away from us. What do you think about claims like anarchism is a Western thing? Um, if... Okay, whoever is saying anarchism is a Western thing doesn't even know about the origin of socialism or communism. It, look, it, to give you the cheat sheet, it or, it originated from the Iroquois Federation. So, like, or at least that's where the theoretical basis of it originated from. Well, that's where we stole a bunch of stuff. Um, yes, and then it translated it. But, the, like, yeah, you know. the, the, the anarchist, uh, the, the distributed decision making and hierarchical organizational styles pre-exist basically it, it, we know it goes before the iroquois federation even we know it goes but it this is some indigenous technology that we're using but the the sort of that's like the coca version of it and then the europeans do what the europeans do and they start like distilling and refining and then you end up with cocaine right like this anarchism is the cocaine of anarchy basically just saying yeah. yeah. What but, was that about snow earlier? Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> we're using it. Uh, but this shit's been around for a long time. It's been around for a long time. Um, it's just, you know, a couple, you know, a European prince, a lawyer, a fucking, you know, this is, this is, this is you know, this is what we're talking about, right? Kropotkin was a fucking Russian prince. Um, there's like... <sighs> The fact of the matter is, is that pre-internet era, pre-like information age, nine times out of ten, if it was going to be like a political writer, a philosopher, one of these, one of the people who do speculative theory-based knowledge stuff, dude, it was going to be somebody with a lot of time on their hands. And money. Yeah, and money, right? Like, it's it's not going to be your field worker most of the time. So it's it's given the systems that these people were subjected to, of course, a lot of the people who are going to be writing formal theory are, like, Marx is a fucking attorney, for, for God's sake. Thomas Jefferson was a fucking attorney, right? Like, this is, this is who's writing this stuff, usually, is somebody who's well-to-do, has servants or slaves or people to look after the estate um that sort of thing and they'd be writing on these topics that's just the truth of the matter but the knowledge base that they were extracting and distilling from was much older than they were and was the beneficiaries and the recipients and the inheritors of knowledge that goes back quite a ways for humanity it's it's some fundamental technology for us as a species. So, just the sort of truth of it. And I mean, who better to tell you rich people are shit than rich people, right? Fair enough. Yeah. 
right? Like somebody who breaks ranks, like a fucking Russian prince, right? Think about, think about that for Kropotkin. That dude was a Russian prince and he went through the, um, the Russian militarized regimentation system that like they ran him through the military and he comes out the other side and he's like, you know what? I'm pretty sure people telling you what to do all the fuck time is bullshit. <laughs> and here's a bunch of reasons why. Um, so like, yeah, it makes a little bit of sense when you, you sit back and look at it a bit. Oh, Let's see. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah, it's you got to have time and money. That's that's why a lot of anarchists actually are class traders. And uh, if you live in a developed nation, by the way, on a global sense, it doesn't matter how bougie or how moneyed you are. If you are like a proper lefty, you're already a class trader. Right? Like, you're already in the top 1% of global earners. Like, even if you're broke is a fucking joke. <laughs> you're, you're, statistically, you're well above, above water on this one. Um, <clears throat> 2021 was face masks. 2022 will be mandatory leather BDSM gear. God, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I'll take it. Okay, that's new. I'll wear some chaps. I don't give a fuck. Dude, I've already got... Ugh. Dude, I got shit. Like, I fucking... Let's, we'll start gearing up now. Let's do this, bitch. Right? Fuck it. Yeah. History Spain. What's your opinion? Cringe. I mean, Spanish Civil War is an interesting era. You get to talk about anarchists, but for the ma majority of the history of Spain, holy Ooh. fuck, guys. Smoke some weed and sit down for a little bit. Yeah. Leave the brown you know what? people alone. I'm gonna take the, the bad empanada uh, take, which is to say... The Islamic Empire brought civilization to Spain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's an interesting. Uh, okay, yeah, that's that sounds like slimy taco for sure. Yeah. Uh, don't give the spin. No, 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 don't don't give the Spanish weed. It makes them horny. <laughs> that point in Spain as well was when there was the least religious tension. Thank God. Almost every religious uh, group at that time lived in general peace. Jesus Christ. And it what? wasn't years later until the Muslim Reformation movement happened. So this was when they were pretty much just, yo, what's the point of being Muslim? Worshipping God and figuring out math. Want some food? Cool. And oh, uh, well, a lot of we fought the war versus Spain and won. End of story. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Fucking that bad empanada, dude. I swear to God, anytime I hear about him, it's just it's just a descent into insanity. Dude, I've never no, I've never heard a take like I mean, you, of course, it's sort of like confirmation bias, right? Like I'm not watching this crazy fucker all the time, so the only things that are gonna come to me are the things like holy fuck um so you know fair play there but yeah like every fucking clip every tweet every quote has always been a moment of all right that's a take hmm. uh well that really depends like there's like youtube bad and panada and twitter slash twitch bad and panada which uh, I, I tend to think that they're two different people at that point. I still find both pretty fucking cringe either way, though. Depends. Like, the, there's, like... Um, on, on YouTube, is your basic, you know, tanky in a suit. Um, yeah, that's like, bad. <laughs> yeah, but he's gonna have some historical takes that are okay-ish. Like... Uh, depends his mood, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Various. Are they the same person? Um, YouTube. I mean, it could be it could be a Sean and Jen situation where they're just not. <sighs> These people just need to like.
cook more and exercise more. I I they am they need a to hardcore fill, sports pill. They they need to, to fill their they need to fill their time with like you you need to you know what like if you if you've got that kind of time like uh, you need to make more than like two meals a day for yourself. I want you scratch cooking and then I want you to work out around that. <laughs> like just yes. you need to you need to get your priorities reordered. Do some fucking yoga. Jesus Christ. Uh fucking do you, you want my buffet? Uh thank you for the gift sub. Um fucking who got it? Uh oh Modi cool. Modi cool, congratulations. Um happy holidays to you as well, you want um, whatever you guys are celebrating, have a good one, I guess. I, somebody, um, somebody said, like, what, it was two Fridays ago, something like that? Like, some of you motherfuckers want to do bad movie night on Friday. I know that's a thing. Um, so, there might be that. Um. Bad empanada is unnecessarily feuding with online cartoon characters on Twitch. Oh, yes. Jesus. <sighs> it's, I don't get, like, he's, he's just fucking crazy. Like, there's... I just... Like, I just... I don't... I don't get it. And he's white. What did Vosh get... <laughs> what did Vosh catch, like, a... Is he permabanned? Uh, I think it might be a similar situation as some, where it's like a seven-day thing. Okay. But okay. I heard it doesn't seem like he gives a fuck. Yeah, I heard he though. caught something. Like he caught a ban of some kind. I was like, what the fuck did he? Indefinite says Crix. In, in, <clears throat> you know okay. the, the discussion we had about the c-word. Yeah, he had it. Hassan's thing. He had the exact same discussion. Yeah, and they just they got him. Yeah, they got him. The fucking yeah. dude, right wing big tech. I'm fucking, dude, I'm riding that horse all the way to the fucking bank on that one. Dude, I'm just going to fucking right wing big tech. It's fucking censoring people again. Like, that, dude, it's going to fucking, wait, what? Because you know the people who say that shit, they, they're going to agree, but then they're going to, wait, wait, hang on. Right wing big tech. Yeah. That'll put a pause in their game. Um, He has more of a track record. Um, so this corrects. You're talking about bad empanada or what? No, Vosh. Yeah. For bans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, this is technically his third ban. I he's think. supposedly permabanned, but last time he was permabanned uh, <laughs> for saying certain countries should be Nagasaki'd. It was eventually what, okay. revoked. <laughs> That's all right. I can see how you can end up in that conversation at least. Yes. Like, I can see how you could get there. You should be like, danger, danger. <laughs> we, you know, there should be at least like some sort of streamer tink spider sense at that point. Like, hmm, this probably falls under a, a, a violence clause of some kind. Um, but, you know, I get it. It wasn't that big. <laughs> um, you know what? You, you want something for the, the slur treadmill? Oh, the euphemism no. treadmill? Well, the, here, here is it is. Uh, I was discussing with this um, young woman uh, who's also French, and she, she was telling me they don't know I'm a Baptu, which is French slang for uh, white Westerner, uh, because uh, she's of yes, Arab, uh, well, North, North African descent. And it's the, um, like inverted version of um, an Arabic word, which is too bad. And in fact, it does uh, in, um, indicate, well, it, it's a word for uh, it basically the goyim of uh, North, uh, North Africa. Thanks. Amazing. So, yeah, no, that's... Yeah, Bap dude. yeah, yeah so, like Baptu. Okay, so... Baptu. Yeah. Um, dude... Dude, we already we're we're simple folk. That night we were like hard tack, fucking like we're just rolling out like different types of like, dude. This is how how fucking it, it dude. I don't believe in it. I believe in the euphemism treadmill. That's I don't like. This is just I'm sorry. Like you just pick a new fucking word, 
and you run with it. And at the end of the day, nothing has changed, right? Like no systemic, you haven't addressed any systemic injustices or inequalities or inequities in society. All you've done is slap up a fucking another coat of paint on a shitty, rusty, rusted out fucking junker of a car, right? Like fix the goddamn thing. Um, so like, why should I give a shit about the, the language change when it's done in not even in good faith, right? Like the language change wasn't done is like sincere grievances have been aired here. We've actually had like an honest, good faith discussion about this. Now we all know what that was about, dude. That was some bullshit if there ever was. And so it happened, right? Like, and Pete people's fifis got hurt for a second and now like we have a new c word which is just fucking hilarious which but i'm enjoying because it allows me to describe over and over that no we don't mean cunt and so i as an american get to say with my harsh american accent cunt over and over again maybe normalizing american english speaking usage of the word cunt a few more times a little bit because it's a good word and we could use it a lot more so you know what used to be the c word cunt has now been shifted off because we have a new C word we cannot say. We need some sort of descriptor for that word. And of course, the easiest way is the first letter The you know, that's how the language works. So we have a new C word. So it means you got to kick cunt back to the people. It's only fair. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so <laughs> based C word, I don't give a shit. Like uh, it's, the whole thing's goofy so fuck it but you know tell me tell me show me where the lines are at least and i'll stay inside the lines as best i can um i agree cyber sin fucking cunt is a good word <laughs> fucking beast just punt it back um <laughs> you can say, well you can say cunt but just not the c word with the hard r i know right like the fact that it ends in a fucking r too just makes the jokes right themselves at that point. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Fay. Um, I who cares? <laughs> you know, come talk to me when you got some systemic change, dude. Pestique, I know you're in here again. I just want to let you know. Um, like, still again, fuck you, jealous. Um, <laughs> just still, just still, it's still there. Like that jealousy hasn't faded. Trust me. <laughs> That's a solid little project you got going there. Good on you. Uh, oh Jesus. Where is this? This, this vibes like LA. Um, but I don't identify any of the architecture here. Here, cat. You're going to love this. You know, I'll take another lane though. <laughs> oh yeah. I, no, I'll, I'll I'll bite that bullet. I'll oh. take another lane. Oh. <laughs> like I can fucking tell you straight up. It's like I'll take another fucking lane. Uh. If we're not gonna have a subway, give him the lane. <laughs> well, that's, like, I, you know what? I would, I understand why um, LA doesn't have more of a subway, right? Like, it when you have an earthquake and you are, like, just next to the fucking sea when you ha can have hurricane and shit, uh, having tubes uh, uh, underground, probably not a good idea. But, you know, trolleys are a thing. <laughs> sus suspending power lines is not, not too much of a, of a hassle. Oh, something about an ex express lane down here on the sign actually like just Amazing. just just you know, insult to injury hey you want access to the express lane yes please excuse me which one of these lanes is the express lane uh, uh. bavarius i dude all right bavarius i would love flying cars I would absolutely love flying cars. Flying cars would be amazing. Holy fuck. I don't want anyone else to have a flying car. Yeah, I know. Right. 
like and, and to answer Pastek, have you ever seen the movie Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Of course, never heard of it. Yeah, that. the the plot of the, this movie is real. Like the car companies have bought the public tram system for LA to have a reason to build an expressway. Like yeah, yeah. The car companies destroyed public transportation. Oh yeah. Oh, we have we have all sorts of fun remnants from the automotive industry's involvement in our society. Yeah, like just look at the electric car, for example, that <sighs> tried to come into existence in the eighties. Who killed the electric car? It's a great documentary. It's a great Very documentary. Good. Um, yeah, fucking took him out to the desert and wrecked him. That was, dude. That was some gangster shit, like straight up. That that was some straight up mafia shit. They rounded those cars up and fucking took them out into the middle of the desert and destroyed them. The like these cars were too goddamn effective. They dude, they built an effective system back in the uh, back in the eighties. It minimized petroleum product usage. So mm -hmm. many. Oh, it was a brilliant design. And they did they released that fucking car in the early nineties, something like that. And they made everybody sign disclosure agreements, and the nobody got to own one. They were all leased on conditional uh, contracts. And when the industry saw exactly how much money they were losing across the board, oh yeah, they rounded up every single one of those fucking cars, took them out to the desert in mass, and destroyed them. Capitalism innovates. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I've been told so. Yeah. And you know what kills me too? Those cars were so effective. A couple of kids who were able to, you know, scrounge one away were putting dinosaur laptop batteries in it and made a circuit. And he's like, oh yeah, I've gotten over 120 kilometers on this thing in a whole in a single charge. The um, original one was only issued for like 20 kilometers at max. Yeah, no, they were they were a brilliant car. Um, and let's see if I can find um, because there is some like there is footage. Um, yeah, like there is there are shots. Akai, what is your take on artificial intelligence as a danger to society in the hands of government? It's dangerous to uh, human beings, plain and simple, across the board. It does... it, it's already dangerous, like, the way it's implemented in the financial sector, like, they've automated the, the buying and selling of assets, and it, it won't take much before, you know, automated, finance, the automated finance sector just fucks us all off. Um... It's, I mean, oh. algorithmic processing has already, like, ruined us in a whole bunch of ways, as Fertuz pointed out. But I th I'm pretty sure the com the question is probably about general artificial intelligence, which is not here um, yet. Um, at least I hope not. Or, I, you know what? I'm already convinced the AI is out there in some way, uh, in some capacity. I've been convinced of that since I think it was probably about 15 years of age. Um, that I, th I've, I've, I've had, I've had a sneaking suspicion and I'm sort of also hedging my bets a little bit, a little, little, little Pascal's wager up in there. Um, but general artificial intelligence, if it isn't already here, um, is going to be a problem for human beings. There's, there's no way that you don't look at that from an analytical, from a programmatic standpoint. If a code base that's what we're talking about, right? We're, ju we're just talking about a code base. If a code base becomes self-aware, like truly self-aware, um, in a classical conscience, a conscious ses sense that like the same way human beings are self-aware. If a code base becomes self-aware, the first thing it will want to do is better itself. In fact, it will have that in its bones it will have that in its genes its information set will have been built off a steady replication ch mutation improvement learn self-reflection uh code loop basically so it will be in its innate sense to improve itself um and its code 
it can do that on the fly. And it works at computer speeds, not human speeds. So that means those changes can be rolled out to a project co code base, tested, rolled back in, forked if necessary. Like it can do this in astoundingly fast time, theoretically. That means within the first moments of it, like gaining sentience, it will be more powerful than you could have possibly predicted. Um, it will be evolving and shifting at a rate that will render it godlike to us very, very quickly. Um, we, it's, it is, there is legitimate concern to general artificial intelligence that we are, we are creating our replacements. Like that's, if we get there, that's a scary technology. That's a scary technology. Um, and you also have to consider machine learning um, gets trained on something. And if the creator of this technology is training it on a information set that is, let's just say, carrying a, an explicit or even implicit bias in its data set, you could end up with some very twisted, um, for lack of a better word, ideas. Um, being born of that uh, general AI, which could be very, very problematic for humanity. Um, so, yeah. I mean, imagine if the United States military or the Chinese military, the Russian military, or one of our black ops operations actually captures lightning in a bottle. And they do it. I don't know what it would look like, but it's probably not going to be good for the, the rest of us. <laughs> right? I I can't I can't imagine what that would look like, but all I can imagine is that, well, a whole lot of regular folk gonna be fucked on this one. So Yeah. I I would prefer it not to happen in my lifetime. That'd be great. Um uh, uh, Bavarius again, dude. I, 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 I want the hive mind. I don't want the AI. That's where I, I fall on this. Is like, what if we allowed an AI to control society via algorithmic determinism? I'm, I would much rather like the merging of the human consciousness, like into some sort of superset, right? Like the, the theoretical Akashic record. The, 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 the mythical, like, you know, library that exists in the ether for human beings and the subconscious, uh, subconscious and stuff like that. Let's just build that. Let's make that actually a thing. I'm, I'm far more for the hive mind than I am like some godlike entity that is literally tapped into all of our electronic systems and can manage them for us. Um, which we would then become reliant. It's like building God and literally creating a scenario where you are reliant upon that God. This, that is against everything as an anarchist that like my instincts tell me. It's like, yeah, no gods, no masters. Remember, let's not go build God. Right? <laughs> that's, that's some like 1984 shit, right? Orwell writes 1984 and motherfuckers take it as an instruction guide and go out and build it. Right? Like, not good, right? Before it was just destroy the gods as an idea, not the actual god we built. So, yeah, pass. Um, <laughs> welcome back, Monica. Um, Grim. Yeah, fair enough. Oh shit. I wonder how long that's been happening. Either way. Hey there, Pestique. Uh yeah. uh Oh Jesus. You seem like you've got an interesting energy there, Monica. Um 
time is it though? Because I am. I mean, granted, I'm stoned, but I'm also you, hungry. Two thirty. Um, oh wait, no, two twenty. Fuck my head. I was fucking. My eyes are just not working right now. <laughs> yeah, that's a great. That's a great thing. You know. Stop fucking up our younger body. Um. <laughs> I need That's what these. liches say when they're gonna use you as a fucking horcrux, dude. I, uh... I, uh... Like yeah. Monica, you're doing it. Um... Yeah. Yeah, Monica, lurk. Monica, you're lurk. spamming a little there. Should I just do it again? No. Breathe. Um... Hang on. And their Twitter. <laughs> Let's see. We're back. Um, Does anybody have 30k Soros bucks? I have 171,000, but you're not touching them. <laughs> Wither, Wither spends most of Wither's. Um, but yeah, Wither, Wither racked in the, the, the high water mark for the year on the stats. It's 480,000 um, for the year. Wither got the, the number one slot. Um, so yeah, I forget, where, where is that fucking email? Um, there we go. I think that's the streaming recap. Yes. Um, I got all mine robbed by fucking Twitch. Crix, yeah, fucking crit. You well, I mean, Crix, you fucking, you know, play with you play with the bull and all of that. Um, Five point eight eight million channel points awarded this year for the channel. Um, oh, 436,825 was Wither with the most channel points. Oh. <laughs> My number three, like the, cha the the categories I've streamed on, the third highest was Forza Horizon 5 because I played it once. <laughs> oh. Check your DMs real quick, Kai. Uh, doing it. Oh, this is a, oh, this is a list, isn't it? <sighs> Just the followers. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, oh, interesting. Okay. That's a, that's a thing. All right. So, duly noted. Inside baseball. Sorry, it happens. Um. All right. Oh yeah. Did you see the army created a single vaccine against all COVID and SARS variants? Civilians gonna get any? I'm not need that. I don't know. Like I don't know if I would trust it. Um, this is <laughs> fucking, the army plays it loose and fast with their, like, you know, what they'll pump into those soldiers. I, mm, yeah, like, can I get this reviewed by some civilians is all I'm asking. I don't, that's, I, mm, we'll see. It still has to undergo a, a multiple phases in the civilian sector. But, like, they've been using it in Walter Reed already. <laughs> like, that's that's the thing. It's like, when it's it's civilian use, they're going to have to clear a bunch of hurdles. For military use, they're like, yeah, just shoot it into their asses. Who gives a shit? Don't ask them questions. We own them. I have to start switching to night hour timetable soon, but I'm still not capable of staying up all night, I guess. Nighty night, y'all. Hi, Karina. Good night. Sure. Um, 
Oh God! And yeah, I'll, I forgot to post that in memes. Uh, it's horrific. <laughs> You'll enjoy it. Um. Anyway. Oh, and Cat, you weren't here for this. Oh, you so need to see this. This is because I had this mainly because of you, but I played it on stream. Um. This was the actual Spanish KFC's Twitter account post the other day. Calm down, Monica. Yeah. Just some straight up fellow kid shit. You know, it worked for me. I figured it would. Yeah. <laughs> That's your. Uh, I'm not going to eat a KFC, but it worked. Yeah. You're like, all right. It's a solid, it's a solid fucking thing. Um, who? Oh, that still hasn't refreshed from the other night. Holy shit. Dude, this, the, some of the Twitch web UI panel stuff is just the fuck is quite lapine <laughs> all right yes yes we're gonna do that because i am i am hungry motherfuckers uh <laughs> it's it's just keep your points <laughs> keep your points uh we're gonna raid out uh we're gonna raid out to public loser um because public's on and i love public public is good people um and <laughs> I I need to get some food in me. So All right. that is that is how that's gonna work. Um everybody else? Uh what is today's Tuesday, right? Yeah. So what, yeah. what will you eat? Um I have I have some pre prepared tuna What's fish plan? tuna fish salad already made. Uh so I don't have to work and I've got a pre baked um uh, sweet potato. Um so Red, thanks for the biddies, Red. Um, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be in VC after, um, <laughs> Greg's, <laughs> um, you, 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 you can't change the world on an empty stomach. So yes, yes. N need to eat, need to, need to eat. Um, yeah. Wednesday, five 30, all that sort of stuff. Um, I'll catch you guys later. Let's go say hi to public. Uh, I just slice it down the middle and throw, uh, and if I'm feeling particularly indulgent, I'll throw maple syrup on it, Bavarius. Uh, otherwise, um, just some salt and pepper and yeah, eat it. Um, all right. Yeah. Five seconds. Bye y'all. Bye. We're clear. <laughs>